How do I start this up? I mean, there's the usual, but I feel like maybe I'll just do the regular intro and then we'll acknowledge where we are. Yeah, whatever you're feeling. But maybe like being like, welcome. Right. Yeah. Maybe say something up top. Yeah. Stokers, this is the beginning of a brand new era of the Going Deep with Chad and JT podcast. We are coming to you live, or this is recorded right now, but from the new Stoke HQ. Nice, dude. JT's guest room. What's up? My podcast studio. But if anyone's crashing here, they can sleep on the couch. Yeah. And there's a B room right there, so you can hop in. But, you know, um, slap my ass and put on the sauce. What up, Stokers of Stoke Nation? This is Chad Kroger coming in with the Going Deep with Chad and JT podcast. Guys, before we begin, I'll remind you once again that we are brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped, thank you so much for keeping our trims pubed, for looking after our hogs, for making sure that our dongs are looking fresh and clean because COVID spring break is right around the corner. And you know what that means? Spring break is in your pants. What does that mean for you guys? That spring break is in my pants? Yeah. It's where the party is. It means it's where I feel my excitement. Nice. Yeah. yeah. The thing makes me think about having a fat boner. And surrounding that fat boner, what are your pubes looking like? Trimmed. Plush, clean. And it's actually, well, spring actually makes me think there's going to be new growth. Right. Right. But tamed. Yeah. Well, you know, with the with the lawnmower 3.0, you can go with different, you know, lengths and stuff. And so you could, you know, it's spring. Cleaning. Spring cleaning. Nice. But you could also, you know, along with cleaning comes the new blossom of pube flowers. That doesn't seem to fit no. right in my mind. No, it's appealing. Oh, thanks. Oh, like yeah. Anything flowers. Well, hey, guys... I have an exclusive, and this goes for you too, Aaron. 20% off discount. Use code GODEEP20 at manscaped.com. Uh, and we are also brought to you by Helix Sleep. Helix Sleep, thank you so much for sponsoring the podcast. Guys, I've never had such good sleep in my life. I was resistant to try the Helix mattress, but then I did, and it was the best night sleep in my life. I'm not even, I'm not even joshing you guys. It's awesome. So, you know, I like firm, but this has a firm softness that, you know, um, combined with a manscaped body, I mean, I can't. It's paradise, heaven on earth. That's awesome. Yeah. So, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Helix is offering up to two hundred dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com/slash go deep. And I'm here with my compadres and Thomas. What up? Boom! Clap, Stokers. And we're here with. Uh, we gotta do with with the first. The first pod in the new space, we got to have the four horsemen of Chillpocalypse, the engagement empresario, nice. and the <laughs> biggest dong in the room. Oh, sorry. Strider Wilson, the biggest dong in the room. Joe Marisi, what up? Oh, yeah. No what one's up? mistaken that. No one's oh. mistaken who's got the biggest dong in the room. Even though I got, I'm using a big dong voice right now, but of a, of a very yeah. small, small, tiny Peter. I was impressed by that voice. Yeah, but you, you you never, like when you're in volleyball and stuff, mm -hmm. you never had the smallest wiener on the team, right? Top 20. 21 guys on the team. Top 20. What is that? <laughs> you were 20th? <laughs> bigger than a libero. He's the guy who does back row only. Mm. It's bigger than him. Top 20. Do you guys not respect the libero as much on the volleyball team? It's a weasel position. Is it really? It's the type of, it's the position where when the libero, and I, I only say this. They wear a special jersey too, You ever right? played libero? Who? Aaron. No, I thought you were the barrel. No, it's back. It's just back row. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, that's in the back. What's Aaron, the... Was, Aaron has a killer ass serve in his back row player. The barrel can or... sub in at any time, right? Le that's the advantage. Yeah, they or come the utility in. of it. Yeah, it's a free sub. So it's a free sub and but back row only and no down ball, so they can't swing at it. So they're basically just dig specialists. Right. And some people say Libro or Libero. I always say these things wrong. Libro, Libero, I don't know. Well, what is Tomato, Libero? Tomato. What they they were yeah. they were a different color jersey. They get unlimited subs, hmm. and they don't they spike. Only, They're not they, allowed to spike. Yeah, can't spike. They can set, and yeah, they they cannot spike it or do down balls even. I believe um, from the back row or like they can't jump and hit it. 
Do you know cool. where volleyball was invented? Like, do you know the origins of it? Dude, that's a great, that's a great question. I do not, I've done, I've done basketball origins, but I have, which is the United States, Huntington but I have not beach, done probably, probably somewhere, probably somewhere beach. I want to say Brazil for some reason, but I know football, foot volley started in Brazil. Yeah. Is, is that where it comes from? Does it have that kind of roots? Like be my guess. Cause they play volleyball with a soccer ball. Mm -hmm. it's amazing it's unbelievable, it's, it's unbelievable the scale. Dude, dudes yeah. jump and land backwards like on their shoulders and, and they heads. do bicycle kicks for spikes it's unbelievable wow. it's the most athletic thing i've ever seen dude. is there anything you guys would do to clown on the libero like pants him after a serve or something you know on our team the libero, the libero, libero was the captain which is pretty unbelievable. on your college team or high yeah. school team college high oh, yeah. school uh connor was the captain who was also in a death metal band so there was no bullying him he was pretty good he was the lead him. singer Dude, he's a great that music singer. was always hilarious though because it's sort of like <laughs> and people are like they're pretty good you guys got to check them out yeah. yeah you're like what's their name it's like death of all time their, or something their band like name that. Is stick to your guns dude no they was, weren't stick to your guns that was oh, a that more was popular the band one. that band's good i still listen to one of their songs what was his band's name? rest assured that with a heart that's pure yes will reign victorious and not let our hate get the best of us yeah Pretty clear. That was good. That was yeah. all the lyrics. And then just after that, and they'd all blow their voice boxes out. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, "Yeah, the guy from Sayos and Anthony Green, he blew his voice box out for the third time." Or it's like, "Dude, you know they, uh, you know, Blood Wallet was supposed to perform on the show, but uh, did you singer? make up Blood Wallet? Yeah, <laughs> fucking <laughs> got, got That'd be a good band, <laughs> dude. And you could see how that would happen, where a guy would like, you know, like got cut while moshing, and he bled all over his wallet, and then yeah. like he paid for everyone's slurpees later. And like, <laughs> dude, look at your wallet. Exactly, <laughs> it's soaked in blood. He's all, I didn't even know. I was cut. <laughs> Yeah. it's like our, our buddy brian is in a he's in a death metal band oh brian christopher brian, brian, yeah brian christopher yeah yeah. I, was, yeah I was thinking of him as yeah talking. Uh, did yeah. he ever go to one of his shows yeah he does the yelling yeah because oh, he's, he's a screamo like, dude he's like yeah. I, I had no idea i think he listens to this yeah does he yeah i had no idea he's like yeah man come to the show and then <laughs> start listening to it and he's just he's He's full death metal. Just we went to one on, on we went to one. one time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like blown away. I was like, oh my God, dude. I moshed. It was awesome. I hadn't moshed in years. Yeah. Like, you, you, you were, oh, we were good at moshing. We moshed I, I, like, at I like staying on the side of the mosh and just, if people come, you just Yeah, I'm not a mosher, dude. I, I, I yeah. went to Coachella one year and Brand New played and I love Brand New and then um, the mosh pit was going and I just turned to my friend without saying a word and just handed him all my stuff and I was like, I'll be back. I went in there and moshed. And then afterwards, people are so sweet in the mosh. A guy came up to me afterwards and just shook my hand. <laughs> what are the rules of moshing, dude? Like no punching? So it depends on yeah. the mosh. I think some of them have different vibes. I think some of them do punch. If, but those are like the more the fringe <laughs> groups. Yeah. But I think... Like that's what's going on in Copenhagen. But each each mosh has its own kind of like social contract that gets established during the mosh, I feel like. And it's an unspoken energy. Yeah. Like you, sometimes like at the brand new one, I think a reason it was a good vibe is that when someone got knocked down, we would not keep trampling and we'd stop to pick the person up. We were like, hey, like we're all good with knocking people down, but let's like be mindful of. Unlike what your bros did to you at Rob Zombie concert at Weenie West one time. Yeah. I blacked out drinking at a at a concert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were joking about this on Call of Duty. <laughs> I was so drunk. I was blacked out. And I literally thought that being an adult meant you just don't follow rules. I was like, the more rules you break, the more adult you are. I was really dumb. And so the bathroom line was too long, so I peed on a bush. And then I just hear this guy on the other end of the bush go, what the fuck, man? <laughs> and this guy stood up. He's like, dude, you're peeing on my back. <laughs> he was like, and I was so blacked out. And I was like, I was like, dude, oh, dude. I was like, kind of being a dick, though. But I was like, oh, dude, I'm so sorry, man. I'm like, but whatever. Like, I wasn't being, I was a total asshole. And he's like, how would you, he was actually a pretty reasonable guy. He was like, how would you feel if someone peed on your back, man? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, man, that suck. And then, uh, but then I went back into the concert. And I, you thought it was a bush? I, it was like a bush. And then I didn't realize it was a <laughs> thick enough bush. I didn't know there was a body on the other side. Oh, right, Just right. sitting there like having a cigarette. And so I started peeing on the bush, like in front of people. <laughs> and then this guy just, I just hear a voice be like, hey man, you're pissing on me. <laughs> and then, um, and I was just an idiot. But then um, I went back and I passed out. I, I, I was blacked out and it was so hot out. Yeah. And so I just went to sleep on like the concrete floor. Yeah. And my buddy Ross was jumping up and down during Rob Zombie and he stepped on my head like five <laughs> times. So I, th I thought I had like a four day hangover. Yeah. And I went to the school nurse and I was like, dude, I got bombed like four days ago. Yeah. And then he's like, you still have a headache and you're having like dizziness issues. And I was like, yeah, he's like, that's not a hangover. He said, like, do you have any like physical contact or anything? And then I like kind of remembered Ross stepping on my head. And I was like, yeah, my friend stepped on my head a bunch. He's like, yeah, you have a concussion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You looked at me, you go, have you, 
heard Rob Zombie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, I want. I, I do. I remember when Zombie? we were at Brian's show. I I I got the the itch though. I I, I yeah. do want to mosh. It's fun. It is. You really get fun. in there. You, you get in the. I mean, you get that energy going. It's, it's Wasn't awesome. there one guy usually that polices the mosh? Yeah, there's one guy who takes on the role of like the father of it. But yeah. I, I've I've seen like wild ones where it's like no one can control it my brother was like pretty good at mosh he's got that low center of gravity oh right yeah i'd like to see him mosh i think i've told Ooh. this story before but you know we look super jewish my brother and i even yeah. though we're catholic yeah, yeah yeah and uh my brother knocked he like really it was a clean hit but he hit this whitehead or whitehead skinhead guy mm -hmm. down to the ground and the guy like was like totally out of it and his buddies picked him up and then his buddies went into a circle and they were like all fucking pissed mm -hmm. and then they turned to my brother and they started doing the Hail Hitler signal with yeah, their arm. Geez. Yeah, and my brother was like, he was like trying to scream at them. He's like, I'm not. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I'm sorry, but I'm even, I'm not. I don't know why. Look, just relax. Yeah, yeah. Your hate is wrong yeah. on every level. Yeah. And then they were just getting super fired up, and we were like, What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? But they, they didn't do anything. It was fine. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> but it, that happened a lot, where yeah. people would think I was Jewish, and then they, I thought they were gonna beat me up for it. Right. Right. Yeah. In mosh pits or just in, in life? <laughs> just in Orange County. Right. In, yeah, in Orange County. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of anti-Semitism. Anyway, there is. Yeah. Yeah. Orange County, dude. Like they have this gang, like, what was it called? Not Deuce. Uh, Who's the gang that was like the Dana Hills gang? Oh, you can look them up on Wikipedia now. The Lords. The Lords, yeah. dude. Yeah. And they were all like well-to-do kids, but they were all really into MMA. Mm -hmm. And they would just go to parties and beat people up. You hear a story mm -hmm. where it was like, oh. they beat up Duncan's dad. Like they just went over to his house and Duncan's dad got beat up. It's like, why? Right. It's like, because he's got a hot dog. Dude, I heard a story, <laughs> come out. I heard a story like that. <laughs> I don't know if it was a real story, but there was a rumor that someone in the hunt club, like this gated community, threw yeah. a prom party. And like a bunch of just animals pulled up in their lifted trucks and like took the house over for a night. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's like a Matt Dillon wow. movie from the 80s about that. Like just a... Uh, you know, youth in a revolt and in nice communities. He's a dentist and he's got to go to the dentist now. Dude, there was one, <laughs> there was one psycho kid who was in a gang. I think his name was, I, I don't want to say his name, but one of our friends went to his 14th birthday party <laughs> and the kid and his dad just fist fought. <laughs> Like the dad was like a <laughs> maniac, yeah. alpha male, probably alcoholic. And he came out seriously. He was like, shut the fuck up to his kid. And his kid was like, fuck you, dad. Like you treat mom like shit and you're never home and you're an asshole. And then I was like, you better back off. And then he yeah. said he, him and his, the kid and his dad, my friend described it as one of the best fights he's ever seen. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. That's so funny. <laughs> you imagine that birthday party, dude? Fucking bounce house. There's a dude like doing magic there. <laughs> to pull a bunny out of the hat. I just think the idea of like a crew of people are going to go beat up Duncan's dad. Duncan's like, dad was talking shit. Yeah. Yeah. kicking a dad's ass. Yeah. Like just so yeah. funny to me. It's like, let's go fuck his dad up, dude. <laughs> Like the sons of anarchy sell like weapons to fucking you yeah, know yeah. on the black market. Like the Lord just beat up dads. <laughs> you're a dad and you got a kid. And you're an OC. Look out, dude. Yeah. Remember, remember yeah. One, one of your buddies was gonna fight someone I know. Someone we know wanted to fight a really good friend of yours, and I was trying to set up the fight. I was like, "Yeah, you guys will fight at like the Coda de Casa General Store. It'll be a good fight." And then your friend was like, "I don't. I'm not gonna fight." And yeah. he's like, "Tell him I'm not fighting. And if, if we do fight, I'm bringing my backup." And I was like, who's your backup? I thought it was like some straight edge kids from like another school. And he was like, you don't want to know who my backup is. And then years later, I found out he was going to bring his gardener. <laughs> his gardener's <laughs> friends to a high school fight. They would fuck shit up. <laughs> yeah. They would say no, dude. Like, what are you talking about? A 15-year-old? They pull up. The fucking chains out like fucking weed whacker. They're like, I'll make up a name for him. They're like, Zane, like, who are we fighting? He's like, you're fighting that 15 year old over there. It's just some grown man. He's like, Dude, I can't beat the shit out of this kid. That's so funny. So my gardener, Boz, dude. Fucking over here. Gonna beat the shit out of a team. If you don't stop selling guns and charming, we're gonna kick your death ass. That is pretty funny. They beat your dad gets beat up, doesn't know why. He's like, hey. Calls his kid in the room. He's like, "So uh, I got jumped at Vaughn's <laughs> by like seven maniacs and yeah, these guys are like stepping on my tops room. and tattoos. They're like, oh, sorry about that, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, was it Duncan? Oh, we'll kick his dad's ass. <laughs> yeah. I pissed off Max Ranelli, and he said he's going to beat your ass. Just all these dads are getting. <laughs> and he says, Grandpa's next. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> They're your taking dad. down the patriarchy, dude. <laughs> progressive, bro. Yeah. Just going after your father. <laughs> 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 
swapping <laughs> one dad at a time. Well, dude. we knew <laughs> they be Duncan's dad. <laughs> we knew one guy, Mac. Remember, he liked dude, to I was fight. Just thinking of Mac. Yeah, and Mac's dad came and filmed one of his fights <laughs> really? in high school. Yeah, yeah. I, that's a a mis- that dude. might be a made-up story. Dude, dude, but his dad, so his dad was like a, a Hawaiian boxer, and like <laughs> you, know, you know, when people tell stories about other guys and they're like, "Hey, this guy's a maniac," and then they have like some story to back it up. They were like, Max crazy. And I was like, why is he crazy? Like he w- brings like mouthpieces out when he goes out in case he gets into a oh fight. And they're like, yeah. and then they're like, and one time his dad filmed one of his fights. Like, <laughs> it seems like I don't know if Max crazy, but his dad. Or how yeah. bored was his dad? Where <laughs> Max like, dad, I'm gonna go fight a guy at the movie theater. His dad's like, oh, come. Yeah. <laughs> I'll film it. Dude, that's oh, that's so Who was funny. the dude? Geech, dude. Geech used to bring out retainer. Or he was like, the no, Conley used to. Conley. Yeah. Geech, you made fun of Geech because. This is so inside baseball, but you said uh, two guys were going to fight, and Geach came to Del Taco to broker the peace. Yeah, yeah. He's like, "Look, here's the deal. Like, you you got this beef. Like, his girlfriend likes him. You know, we can't control these ladies. They're running amok. So yeah. you guys aren't going to have to fight." And we're like, "Geach, what are you talking?" About? He was like a consigliere or something. <laughs> like that. Well, he dressed like a that was like I don't know if that's still popular, but he dressed like a uh, what do they call that? A greaser. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, yes. Nice. He was a greaser. Style. That was kind of yeah. popular when I was. Greaser guys were like age. tough, wax in the hair. Like basically, you look like you're yeah. And they drive like low riders. Like they really committed to it. Dickies, the the oh, they they were like full on like grease. They looked like Danny Zuko. Yeah, really. A little more modern. Like they like maybe like more social distortion than like Frankie Valli. But yeah, yeah. have you guys watched Grease lately? No, No, I heard it's very predatory. Right. It is. Yeah, and the song Grease Lightning. Yeah, yeah. Like the lyrics. The chicks will scream. He's like the chicks will cream. Like (laughs) yeah, that's it. Yeah. You're like whoa, dude. I was watching this in like fourth grade. (laughs) In summer nights, they're like, did she put up a fight? Right. Yeah. 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 And and all those guys are forty in Greece too. Yeah, they're all forty. Like the one guy, the guy in the rival gang has like oh dude, like his skin. You're like, what the fuck? First person I ever saw with acne. I remember. Yeah, it worked for the characters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He did. He scared me. But he was like 30. But he was hot too. Yeah, he was edgy. But like in a way where he, his, you were like, he's a villain though because his skin is bad. Kaniki or whatever. He, he's yeah. a hot dude. Very hot. Yeah, Kaniki remember, was cool. Zook, oh, Danny he's Zuko, well, he's on the date with, uh, what's her face? He's he's in the car with her John. and he does the hand over right. and grabs her boob. Yeah. <laughs> like, just Pretty like, awkward. Yeah, he just grabs it. <laughs> like, what do you expect to happen from there? Just yeah. Like well, that was the thing when you're yeah. young. Yeah. You're more like checking, bo- you're not enjoying grabbing a boob, really. You're yeah. just enjoying the fact that you're like checking off this huge life box that you've yeah. dreamed about for. So you do it kind of awkwardly, you yeah. know? And, you're just, and then you just have your hand on a boob and you're like, you're just nodding. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, <laughs> done. She loves this. Yeah. Thing. And the poor girl sitting there like, what yeah. is going on here? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe she loves it too. Maybe she's checking a box. Yeah. I brought my middle school GF to see Black Hawk Down and put my arm around her and didn't move it in the entire movie. Could not move it after. It was like literally fell asleep. Dude. Right. I was like, okay. My arm is supposed to be around my GF in the theater. Right, this is right. What it's supposed to go. And I didn't pull a zook. I wasn't a, you know, I'm definitely, you know, a weird dude, but wasn't a pervert and pulled my arm in her boob, you know, but just put my arm there. You weren't and, a pervert? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I had sick. I have sick, sick thoughts. Sick, <laughs> sick thoughts. I wanted her to take an action movie, you know, about a movie never leaving a man behind, you know. Yeah. Oh, wait, what movie did you guys see? Black Hawk Down. Great. You took your, yeah, your girlfriend to see Black Hawk Down. Yeah, you see what the lady's made of. You know what I'm saying? Dude, did she like it? Ma, there's no way she liked it. It's a pretty intense movie. Yeah, dude, my arm was falling asleep during the surgery scene. I was like, oh, dude, it's so intense, dude. Everyone, cast. everyone I knew took him to like to girls to like save the last dance. No, dude. I'm not gonna learn anything about character and save the last dance. Like middle school GF. Gotta take her seat Black Hawk down. Good call. See how she reacts. Save the last dance is pretty good the... though. Which one save the last dance? Yeah. It's know. where Julia Stiles goes to an inner city school and kind of falls for her friend's older brother, played by Sean Patrick Thomas. And they and he teaches her how to get back into dancing because she gave up ballet when her mom died. Oh, that's right. This sounds like a good movie. This sounds like a movie. Uh, hustling to get to, to one of her recitals. You never seen it? I don't think I've seen it. Oh, you gotta watch it. I watched it back in the day. Love me some Julia Stiles. What's yeah. what's Julia Stiles up to these days? I don't think she she, she just does the Bourne movies now. She's yeah. in a Bourne movie every five years. Yeah, so she's in Bourne franchise. Yeah, great movie. She's a big character in it. Yeah, those are good. Dude, I was rewatching clips when uh, because Clive Owen's one of the assassins in the first one. Really? So I was, I was watching when Matt Damon kills him. Yeah, he's good too. Like, because I was like watching it, like really, like being like, okay, this is Clive Owen. Let's see if you can tell he's like what kind of actor he's gonna be. And even the way in the close up, he like zoom puts his eye on like the scope. I was like, that was pretty badass. Really? Yeah. I like Clive Owen. Yeah, he's good. He's good. Clive Owen. Crazy. 
Yeah, they got a similar vibe. No, he hates Clive Owen. Oh, he does? I don't know why. I don't think a lot of people like Clive Owen. I, I remember reviews for Duplicity, they were like, he's not charismatic enough for this role, which was pretty rude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it was originally Keaton, right? Duplicity? Or did... No, what movie am I thinking of? Oh, that was Keaton? Multiplicity. Multiplicity. That's, I that's a, a remake. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. I don't mm-hmm. know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> All I know is the Bourne movies taught me the word Shiza, dude. I didn't know Shiza. Oh, yeah. When that movie came out, I was saying Shiza left and right, dude. dude Marriage, good Your word. junior high girlfriend, you yeah. guys never broke up, right? So you're technically still together? Married now. She's so got kids. <laughs> What's going on? I'm pissed off. If <laughs> you hit her up, and you're like, <laughs> yeah, <every night. laughs> like what are we? Well, what every do you mean? 3 30 a.m. I'll leave a message on the ranching machine. I know this detail. Hey, it's me. What's going on? Strider told me they never <laughs> officially broke up. So we never broke up. We just dated. I called her one time. Her mom picked up. I was like, cool. And then, like, talked, like, hey, so homework. And then. She hung up and then like I literally like as I asked her out towards the end of summer, smart on my uh, calculated because if she said no, then we had summer. Everyone would forget about it going forward. But she said yes. And, but she's a very, very nice person. And she told and her friend of hers told me, but uh, trying to hurt me that she goes, oh, yeah, her name. Her name is Danielle. She goes, oh, yeah, Danielle she says she doesn't like you, but she'll learn to like you. <laughs> And in my mind, I was like, it's very nice and unbelievably mature for my seventh grade girlfriend. But at the same time, <laughs> yeah. you also succeeded in hurting me. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> oddly mature, but kind of like the wrong way to probably think about relationships. Yeah. But I get that. Yeah. In seventh grade, you just kind of want to have somebody. And you go, you you would, it was like the thing, like all the buddies were asking girls out and it was like, well, I got to ask a girl out too. Yeah, yeah you, you feel know? the pressure. Yeah. And like, what is it? Who are you asking out? And like, if people kind of think about it. And then I was like, all right. Yeah. Would you guys flirt with your friends' girlfriends in junior high? No, I'm not flirting, dude. I'm kidding me. So you just weren't flirting, period. I, mean, I don't think I knew how to no, flirt. No, yeah. I think I think me standing near them, not saying anything, I was like, dude, I'm giving up vibes. You probably that, that was my flirt. Mm-hmm. But I remember I, when I was in, because everyone was asking girls out. I, I, I was like, oh, I got to ask out Liz. So in like sixth or seventh grade, I was like, hey, we're at the pool. I was like, hey, you want to go out? She's like, mm, Yeah. And I was kind of in my mind, like, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, like, what are you talking yeah, about? Then what do you and do? then I yeah. instant yeah. message her, like, a day later. I'm like, hey, so my <laughs> friends think it's a bad idea. <laughs> and she's like, sounds like you don't know how to think for yourself. I'm like. She said that? Yeah, I was like. Dude, I, these, the intelligence of junior high people. Yeah, yeah. I was, and I was just so, like, I was like, I just, like, got scared. I don't know what. Of course, yeah. I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> Because <laughs> immediately I was like, oh crap, I don't want to like, I want to be tied down. I'm in sixth grade. <laughs> yeah, I did that. Yeah, you want to play the field. Yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't really know what I was doing. Ball. I was like, oh man. I met, I met a girl on spring break and she lived in Alabama and I lived in California. And yeah. when I got back, I found out another guy from spring break had asked her out. Oh really? But me and her had had a stronger connection and he yeah. lived in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And I was like, can you leave him and be my girlfriend? She was like, yeah, I'm down. Amazing. And then, just, <laughs> and then a week later I was like, hey, you live in Alabama. It's like I think we have to break up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We weren't going to see each other a lot at, at, at my boarding school. The, the way you ask a girl out is you ask them to walk back. So you'd be, you know, in like the main, the common area or That's whatever, very the main building, and you'd walk them back to their dorm. Oh, so they, oh. yeah, yeah. Like, hey, do you want to want to walk back? Nice. And everyone would see you do it. It's very like out in the open. The optics matter. Yeah. Would you yeah. hold hands? It's kind of like animalistic too. It's like the other animals in the the pride or whatever. Yeah. However you define the group. Oh, yeah, and yeah. and you weren't allowed in their dorms. Like if you got caught in their dorms, you were. This is a serious, serious offense. Dorms um, are so, so weird. Yeah. So you, you yeah you so you you'd walk them back, but you know if you wanted to get naughty, there's a forest. Whoa. So, like, so hey, you want to walk back? And then you start walking. You'd be like. You want to go to the forest? <laughs> you want to have sex in the wilderness? On the third yeah, walk yeah. back. Oh, no, let's four. Get nasty. Yeah. The and then you just suck face. Oh, you go to the florist? Yeah. There's, there's, a there's someone. Pervy florist. Yeah. yeah. Where you, they make flowers. The guy from the town. Make out. Peter Postulate. <laughs> your father used to bring his <laughs> girl in here. <laughs> yeah. And your sons will bring their girls in here. I'm you the place where everyone has sex. bouquet of flowers. Yeah. Joe, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Yeah. What's yeah. new? Um, yeah, not too much. Just, uh, you know, got the new roomies in and, uh, place is looking great. It looks yeah. amazing. Um, I'm in the master bedroom now, so that's I heard, cool. Yeah. yeah. Graduated to that. That's nice. Um, yeah, it's almost like your own hotel, you know, 
without you got the bathroom without getting the specific numbers we were discussing what the percentage difference in rent should be for the person who has the master bedroom has their own bathroom doesn't have to share one and gets one of the parking spots in the garage there's two what what percentage difference do you think that person should pay rent wise and so there's three bedrooms there's two more bedrooms and the two other bedrooms share a bathroom yeah yeah a lot of people have different opinions on this the master definitely pays more. Right. But how much more? Yeah, that's the matter? thing. It's better if I... Co- okay, I'm coming up with an arbitrary number. This is not the actual figure for rent, <clears throat> but just for the purpose of the conversation, 4000 How do you split that up amongst three people? So if rent's 4000 Yeah. So if everything was even, it would be in thirds, but this guy's got a little bit more. 1200 1200 and 1600 Or maybe 1350 and 1150 for the guy's... For the guy who gets the parking spot, yeah. If they're yeah, if the parking spots are designated, yeah, you got to go. Here's you got to do parking spot separate. Figure out what the rent is for the room, and yeah. then go a parking spot cost this much, and then factor that in. And a parking spot should be a lot, dude. I think it's fifty bucks up because the other guy loses fifty bucks, so it's a it's a hundred bucks. Spots different. almost should be a hundred bucks up. So really? you go, so it's thirteen hundred to eleven hundred. It's a big swing when you talk about it that way. But I know people who rent spaces for like a hundred bucks per month. In LA, maybe seventy five bucks. Maybe, yeah. But then the person, the third person, can just get a permit for the street. Mm-hmm. But then they but everyone pay can for get that. a permit. Yeah, it's only twenty bucks, but you can all get those. That's kind of a separate. That shouldn't play into the conversation. Mm-hmm. The uh, the accessibility of the road parking because it's, it's street it's parking even among everybody. Right. So you know, sometimes I try to sound too official, and I, the words come to me slower because of it. Because hmm. I'm trying right to find the time. perfect word. <clears throat> it's legit, though. Dude. That's why I just use the word legit. Yeah. Whenever I can't think of a word, I just go, yeah, it's fucking legit. Strider, I, I got to say, your your Dank IPA shirt is. Baby, you don't think I'm going to bring. On fire. Yeah, that's a great I'm shirt. Never miss an opportunity for business. Did you guys get this dank camera set up? I got this legit background. By the way, the room looks beautiful. I like the uh, horseradish couch to the untrained eye that's yellow. That is not. That is a horseradish couch. I love it. Horseradish is having a moment in decor right now, and it's really presenting itself well in this room. I fucking love this. I'm not some guy. I've decorated two apartments with my freaking dang fiance. So I'm I've seen not them just come to life. Some guy. Actually, I haven't seen the new one, but I saw the old one, just piece by piece, just dank by dank. Thank you, dude. And there's always a project. You know, there's always a corner to turn, and you know, budgeting. So, but I like the incremental approach too because it allows you to tinker. It does. Uh, yeah, exactly right. And I'll tell you, you, you gotta. You, De- decorating uh, there's personality and there's someone's decorating personality when you yeah. say your lady she likes to send stuff back right uh, yeah you said it i didn't say you, it. you know you should talk to i didn't say light you said light <laughs> you know oh, 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 think about the right word oh <laughs> i'll tell you right now you know you know you should talk to her mom really? oh yeah your mom's she, an artist she dude. she de- she lives to decorate that's nice dude yeah let's go yeah Dude, I fucking hate decorating. My brother yeah. will be like, my brother will do it for me. He's like, hey, do you want me to bring over some drapes? And I'll just instantly get tired. I'm like, why are you trying to ruin my fucking day, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's something about shopping where I'll have, I'll be, all right, I'm going to go shopping. Best and then, in the world, you know, too. like 20 minutes into shopping, I, I get exhausted. I'm like, yeah, shopping. I'm like, tough. this is the options. This Dude, is my, horrible. My dang yeah. fiance and I have something called Target Time. Right. Well, we were in Target one time looking at decor <clears> stuff. <throat> And when we when we drove into the lot, I, I noted, I go, oh, we only get two hours in here. I made sure to say it out loud. Oh, there's only two hours in here. And we go into Target, we're looking at stuff, and I'm like, like I don't know, we're pretty close in that validation. We don't want to have to pay the upgraded rate. She looks at her watch, she's like, we've been here for 15 minutes. <laughs> well, it's like that scene. Like Target time. I mean, you know, I can't relate to the other 95% of the movie, but in the Hurt Locker, when Jeremy Renner comes home and he's like, it's it's showing you why he misses like the simplicity of war life, and he's at a grocery store, and there's just so many cereals. And the shot of him just looking at the 90 options, you're like, it just right away, I was like, there is something profoundly sad about how many options we have. Mm. Yeah. But that's why the target is like that. It just wails on you. Yeah. We went there today to get an SD card for the sound. Yeah. It's amazing there. It's a total maze. And you got to get, you got, you got to track. Do you see like, it's like, we need a warm body in this electronic section now just to help us out. I always ask yeah. for help. I'm very annoying. If I see someone with like a one of the shirts on, I'm like, hey, do you know where I can find this? No, dude, you got to. It saves mm-hmm. you. Yeah, it saves you. Doing valet time. runs, bro. Like, There's 100 aisles. Yeah, dude. You, yeah. Gotta, you track someone down 
in dude look at any old person or old lady they know what they're doing they've lived life dude they're mm. gonna get that person they're gonna lock into them and make them go shopping with them dude yeah at home depot <laughs> I, I ask for help every time but i mean they they give you a look where you're like hey, hey where are the where are the pipes and the guy's like the pipes are over there like they they you know it's kind of like you, you get do you think they train them to be that way because home depot is kind of badass so they, they gotta I, I think badass. so. I think they're kind of like I think they're kind of like you got to like shame these guys into being a little bit more masculine, right? And, and feeling bad about the fact that they're not as handy you're as like, they you don't know be. where the lug nuts are. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was I was like I was trying to figure out my ice bath, you know. So I was like, yeah, here's the thing. I've got this chest freezer and I'm filling it with water, and the guy's like, what? <laughs> 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 and I'm like, so I need Flex Seal. Flex Seal. He's like, yeah, it's all down there. And then it, like I was asking all these questions, and he's just like. He, I was like, I was like, yeah, I think I need like a hose, you know, I need a hose with like um, a valve. And he's like, <laughs> I don't even fucking remember. You know what you they, do? They just like, like, he just wanted you to be building something with like, well, he was just like, more... he's like, he was like, yeah, that's a valve kind of thing where I'm, it's just like, how do you not know these things? And I'm just like, I'm not, not handy. You're a stoke lord. Yeah. I, I was like, I'm only handy in the drill factory. I kind of butchered that story, but. Oh, not at all. Do you, do you think uh i don't know what i'm talking about no but do you what percentage of people do you think react that way when you tell them about your ice baths um most people yeah it's got to be near 100 yeah <laughs> i still tell my yeah, dad about it I'm, 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 uh, you know my, my dad's yeah. still I mean, perplexed by <laughs> well really <laughs> but, i mean just, i don't think it's that just weird the phrase it's ice bath. Bath. maybe it's because i've known you for bath. so long yeah yeah well i mean because we, we did one like two years ago yeah but yeah, before that, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I just, I think it's becoming more normal now than than you know if it were like five, ten years ago, because it's all over the internet, you know, like Larry like, Hamilton like, and Wim Hof. And yeah, stuff. Larry Hamilton, Wim Hof, like optimizers and stuff. They're like, yeah, you gotta eat like beef liver and you gotta sun your asshole. And but I had never heard of beef liver back. until you told me about it. Yeah, I, I didn't really think. I didn't think it was like a thing until. <laughs> few months ago dude it was but, funny watching you eat it yeah it sucks <laughs> well, it, well dude because you i can see it. you grappling with it like you're like you, you turn to me like both. three times you're like i mean it tastes like shit but it's good for you, you no know? no and i'd see you cut like well, that's the thing is it, it's it's, oh, it's, it's horrible <laughs> it's 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 so bad but it really does boost my stoke like the next day i'm like wow i feel very like Really? I got all the micronutrients. I feel good. Dude, and you eat it like and a it's sandwich. a fight. Yeah. You, you sear yeah. it, dude. He eats it like sushi, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I sear it so it's, it's raw and well done, done, dude. Yeah. No, but no, you I think it's nutrients. Less nutrients, yeah. And I, I get like I get like grass fed, so it's like good quality. It's so, it, you know, it, it's, it's yeah, you're not getting it from I'm not getting it from like Where can you get that? Bel Campo. He kills oh. the shout out. Dude, yeah, dude. Tatanka, dude. I did. Fucking... One day, I think maybe I'll upgrade to that level where I kill the cow myself and I eat the heart. I come over, you yeah. just have, I just hear a moo in the backyard. Yeah. Like, what is that? It's my cow maple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I think, I think maybe I don't think it's as weird because my brother is like a, a little bit a, a notch above. And, you know, I'll be like, yeah, I eat beef liver. He's like, you didn't eat it raw. Yeah. You know, yeah, so exactly. he, I'm, I'm always, he's always, you know, one upping me. In, what in is terms that with like, like, I, I'm like on a workout thread and I, I showed yeah. everybody the workouts I did. And then like yeah. my buddy was like, did you squat on the power cleans? Yeah. I was like, why'd you just try to make it harder on me? Yeah. yeah like I didn't put in the work. Yeah. But I, 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 he was, but I think he was just being genuine, but I was right. a little bit like kind of took the wind out of my sails. Right, right, right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's, I think it's just dudes competing to see yeah. who can be yeah. most raw. But my brother, he's, uh, uh, I think, I think part of why I do the ice baths and stuff is to impress him a little bit. Be like, yeah, I did four minutes in there. And he's like, good. That's normal. The yeah. older brother kind of sets the curriculum for what's yeah. cool. Yeah. And then you're kind of like, even if you're not fully like a student of that anymore, you're always yeah. kind of like, oh, okay, but that's the values are there. Yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. that's what you got to do in Home Depot. You got to go in there and say, hey, I can't find, like I need a, hey, find a little flathead or a Phillips head, but I did four minutes in an ice bath today. Where do I find those? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, just let them know that. you got to go in there yeah. with just beef liver in your, it's beef liver, right? Yeah, yeah. In your pockets and just yeah. pull it out and eat it like a, yeah. like a cliff bar in front of the guy. Yeah. yeah. Pencil in my ear. With some blood going down your mouth. Every blood day. Four by inch, three quarter inch plywood. Where do I find that? You don't mind <laughs> snack, do you? Yeah. <laughs> just have, it's like iced in your pocket. Yeah. You've got some ice in there too. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. Like a pocket that's a cooler. That's a great idea. Oh, Is that a good it. idea? 
for a festival. Dude, I'm in the Steve Jobs Coachella. book, so I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, my brain is in an innovative space right now. Dude, have you I mean, shared your knowledge about Steve Jobs? It's pretty incredible. Dude, I want, I'm trying to think ways. about it, but I think it's such a cliche read that everyone already kind of knows the greatest hits. But he is amazing. I mean, dude, my main takeaway is he cries a lot, which I, I cry a lot, so I was happy to see that. He has no emotional governance. And he never wears shoes, which makes me a lot more comfortable not wearing shoes and also having my shirt off. Did he always wear... Because you always picture him in the turtleneck outfit. Was that part of his no shoes wearing type thing, or is that just he? He did like aesthetic Hollywood. simplicity. Mm. Yeah, he thought it was like a waste of time to like care about. I don't know how you looked and stuff so like that. But then shorts. he did care, you know. So of it's course, like that's part of that's his way of doing. You're right. It. There's a lot of like uh, he's very aware of the impact it's having. You were yeah. like about Obama. They would say, you know, how he would dress. What he had, they're like Obama has seven suits. He takes one suit, he wear it, and then when it's clean, he puts it in the back, and it just goes down the line, cycling mm, through right. suits rather than choosing it and like whatever day lands on lands on. He might have had more than seven. Yeah, like, tr Trump actually dressed pretty simply for for his like persona and his braggadocio. You'd think he would have worn like oh, dude, yeah. a gold like sports coat when he won the president, but he doesn't. Right. He think, but he he likes he has his own. I, I, I don't know if I totally agree with his taste on what's tacky, but maybe that's too tacky for him. Mm. Yeah. Well, I always remember watching The Apprentice back in the day. He had the shiny, just solid colored ties. And I, I never really saw that before. Or I guess I'd seen it, but he was the first guy where I was like, oh, yeah, Trump wears like the solid gold, solid pink ties. That was like Ari on uh, Entourage. Right. Oh, that was the yeah, first time yeah. I saw the big knot. Right. All yeah, of his yeah. Ties were big. And I actually double like the other stuff. I like, yeah, I like a skinny wind, tie. Yeah. I like skinny ties too. I think those, I think like early 2000s was like the big knot and then like skinny ties came in like 2010. I like a big thick tie. That's more. You're, you're a thick yeah, tie for guy? sure. Yeah. Oh, like matching. you like a nice red tie, right? With like sailboats on it or something. Um, I like uh, like a navy or a maroon. Yeah. No, I don't like objects. How many? Uh, on the ties. How many? Unless how, it's Christmas. You've been a best man how many times? Best man? Um, no, just once. But I've stood up in a few weddings. Yeah. How many is a few? Two or three. I'm being competitive about this. Why? How many garters have you caught? JT's caught. Oh, I think I have caught one. You've caught one. I think just one. Interesting. I caught. You caught, you caught one. one? Yeah. Aaron caught one. I caught five in a row, but then everyone got wind of how I like I was making it a thing. So then it's like the sixth wedding. Oh, so like they six, box you up? He's like six three guys are all around. Yeah, I would have been like, old, we're not letting him get it for the sixth time. Yeah. I didn't even jump. Yeah, I would like, I would have been wanted to be yeah. the guy to end the no, street I still too. Jumped. Yeah, at one wedding, the camera guys filming. You know, the, the videographers are capturing the whole wedding and shit. <clears throat> JT catches the garter and goes up to the camera, and just goes. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing, dude. Dude, there's one where I jump in front of a kid mm -hmm. who's got a broken leg, and I grab it real quick. Nice. Kid should have been careful on the skateboard. Dude, good call. Yeah. It's always a bad toss, so you got to be out right up front for that thing. You're so smart. That's exactly what it is. Really? And it's the yeah. floor, typically. No, it never goes as far it. as people think it's going to go. Yeah. And then also, if you're in the front, you can push backwards and box out. Positioning. Smart. And also, yeah, all the other smart. guys had girlfriends and probably didn't want to, you know, they didn't want the implication. Yeah. Where, where I was wildly single at each wedding. <laughs> it's like, who gives a fuck? Did, is that still a thing? Like, if you catch the bouquet, that means you're next? That's what so. they say. Yeah. yeah. It's a fun tradition. It wasn't there, like, I think I read this in a book, but like, one lady had been dating her boyfriend for 12 years. So the bride just like walked over and just handed her the bouquet. Dang. Or that's like in 28 dresses, I think, because she's the only single lady still. Oh, yeah. Um, 27 dresses. Yeah, it's with, 27. Uh, 27, my bad. What's her name? Catherine Heigl. Catherine Heigl, who is. Uh, I like to say a poor man's Gwyneth Paltrow. Who vicious, man, vicious. This is what I said. But you know what? <laughs> yeah, pretty good. Pretty assess. interesting. Thank you. Right? Because they're both kind of uh, snooty too, right? Mm -hmm. They both yeah. kind of make act, you know actorly comments, like sort of unaware comments. Mm -hmm. Like I'm very surprised both of them didn't have heavy, heavy, um, you know, verses in that. Um, remember that coronavirus video that Gal Gadot put out, like almost a year from right oh, now. Oh, yeah. were they saying she, imagine? She would have yeah. dominated. Oh, I'm surprised yeah. both of them didn't, you know. Come out with that idea. Paltrow can sing. Paltrow's a talent. She's super talented. Dude, Shakespeare in Love? Kidding me? Let's go. For sure, let's go. Let's go. Shallow, Very good movie. Shallow you know, Hell. Shallow Hell, great movie, yeah. yeah. You know who? <laughs> Country Strong? <laughs> Horrible movie. What what, which one? Country Strong. I've been listening oh, to music yeah, from it lately. Give one of the most unbelievable to movies. Me. Oh, yeah. Great, great song, though. Yeah, it's got some. Dude, country, like, concocted music for country movies is always good. 
That Ryan Singer guy in Crazy Heart, he was like 25 when he made that song. Bro, that's such a good song. This so, ain't no place. falling feels like flying mm -hmm. for a little while. Great fucking song. Man. Country's a good... If you can't sing, you can get away with doing a little bit of country. Except my, for Garth. Don't fuck with Garth. My dad will still tell me, he's like, you know what you should do? Be a country star. You do look good in a cowboy you hat. Dude, because bro, when you sent me the photos of you on the horse this past weekend, oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, it works. I've seen oh, a dude, couple thanks. comics I, do I, that Dude, recently. can I request for you to send some of those to me next time you're dressed like a cowboy? Can I request that from you? I'll dude? send you some tonight. Okay. My dad gave me his boots. It might have been on Instagram. Ooh, nice. It might have been on Instagram. I, saw I personalized it. To you hurt you. Personalize it. Well, guess what? You came up aces. <laughs> what, what would you rather? Would you rather be a, a, a country music star or in a boy band? Boy band. Yeah, because you get to hang with your boys. Dude. <laughs> I mean, dude, there's nothing cooler than being a boy band. Oh, yeah. Every music video, you ride a motorcycle on a tank top, then you dance at a basketball court, and then you and a hottie play pool together. Come yeah. on. It's a mistake at the office. <laughs> dude, dude I, I saw a video of Justin Timberlake back in the day where he comes up full bandana, and he's like, and now get ready for the human beatbox. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> dude the amount that they dressed those kids like they were black urban guys oh yeah, oh, yeah. dude like just way oversized like timbaland blue jean jacket yeah, yeah, yeah you're like yeah. <laughs> it's like this 15 year old white kid you're like yeah. this kind of, at the time though i was like this is fucking sick dude oh yeah i always liked how wet they were too when they would hose them down <laughs> oh you yeah they're hosing these kids down having they'd them hose them down and they'd be wearing like blue like uh yeah, butt right, dude, I'm yeah. Them, yeah. and it would stick to their skin a little bit and i remember being like oh my god i remember being in third grade and being like these guys are hot <laughs> I was like, like bro, this is the death of we, hot. We, we, wait, wait, what were you going to say? Uh, I'm just thinking of like the dirty pop music video. It's so good. Justin Timberlake in a fedora and he's just breaking it down, you know? Where else can you do that? No, you kind of... It's the best. They let you be anybody if you're in a boy band. Yeah. yeah. You always felt bad for like the fifth guy in the boy band though. Chris Kirkpatrick? Yeah, and, like or Howie. <laughs> yeah. And Who's then, Howie? Howie was the fifth guy in the Bashery Boys. Boys. Yeah. I had no idea. Like, literally, their designation was, like, the nice one. <laughs> yeah, he was, yeah. like, really tall and quiet. <laughs> Spice Girls were great. So was, yeah. Everyone was oh, cool. They had, like, yeah. cool, like, sporty. Can you guys do it? Come on, Spice Girls quiz. Let's go. Okay, right Scary, now. sporty, posh, ginger. Mm -hmm. That's it? That's it? Baby. That's it? Oh, and baby. Yeah. Oh, dude, Whoa, baby. Dude, dude, baby. Dude, and baby was. Oh, I, was yeah, I remember just thinking a lot. I remember watching the movie as a kid. Just to have my little boner when I saw baby. I was like, <laughs> Yeah, dude, Spice yeah. World. Yeah, yeah. but were, now, yeah, but now as like an older gentleman, baby Spice is a little. It's a little, little dicey. The infantilization of her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, but yeah. as a as a twelve as a twelve year old. Aaron, you know what I'm talking about. It's it's not weird that you liked it. It's weird for like the 40 year old male producer who was correct. Like, yeah, who was like, let's lean into the baby. Yeah, be more of a baby. Goo goo gaga. <laughs> give her the pigtails. The pigtails. I come on. I want you to be monosyllabic in all your interviews, and I want you to just make noises like a baby would. That's great. <laughs> can we get her? Can we get her a light size? Can we get her a big crib? What's going on here? Yeah, get her a pacifier and put her in a big crib. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have her piss her pants. <laughs> Where's your diaper? Where's your diaper, baby? <laughs> In a boy band, that'd actually be pretty hilarious, though, if they made one of the guys a baby. That'd be we're going to get her inoculated on stage. That'd be incredible. <laughs> that'd be good boosters. That'd be me. My, my pledge name was I'm Too Young for This Shit. Really? Yeah. Because like I'm the opposite like of Danny Glover. 12. Yeah, people always... I, I've been saying I'm 33 a lot lately, yeah. and people are like, I thought you were 23. Yeah. Which is like nice, That's but also kind of insulting, too. Yeah. Hmm. Because of the maturity thing, you want to be seen as mature, probably. Yeah, a little bit more mature. Yeah. You don't want anyone to think you're a decade younger maturity-wise. Right. But I mean, I, no, I like it. it. It's a very humble brag. Yeah. Hey. What have you, you? You you were never the too young for this shit guy, right? No, people always thought I was. Well, actually, people think I'm a few years younger than I am. No, looks-wise, for sure. Yeah. But, but persona. No persona. No. I always was very mature. You were older than your dad, right? Yeah. Oh, very yeah, mature. Yeah. I've heard you like pick on your dad. Like Joe wanted rare sometimes. coins for yeah. his tenth birthday party. Dude, I want a rare coin. What on the phone? Yeah. Like your dad was like, I've, I, he's like, do you mind if I do an impression of your dad? I, I go go ahead and try. I don't know if you can. Your dad was like, Joe, I went to the uh, sandwich place. You know the one down by uh, Becky's, and I, I got the sandwich for the third day in a row. And then you go, Jesus. <laughs> Slow down, fat ass. Yeah, well, somebody's got to watch his weight. Yeah. 
Nobody's lost weight recently, so that's good. That's nice. good. Nice, good. I'm trying to think what I make fun of my dad about. I, 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 told, I made fun of him for being whipped one time. He's like, how do you think me and my girlfriend are getting along? I was like, good, good. I was like, you're kind of a bitch though, dad. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Yeah, why did you say that? I just want to get under his skin, I guess. I love that you said that. But then they got into an argument later, and I was like, oh, did I, did I pop that off? Oh. Because I got into my dad's head a little bit. Could be. But not. Maybe a tiny slice of the pie, but no. He's got control. We can't let that get to him. Yeah, I think it's funny to call your dad. Like, I so. make fun of my dad for uh, being able to get pinned by me. Could you beat your dad up? Yeah, you could beat up Richard, right? Yeah, I could beat my dad up. When do you think you crossed that threshold? High school. Sophomore year. When I dunked at my AM practice, dude. I dunked, landed. Yeah, with a volleyball. Go, no, with a basketball. You could dunk because you have small hands. I do have tiny little hands and a tiny little dick. It's true. Dude, it's so hard to make fun yeah, of you because you just take it so fast. But it's, look, it's truth. You know what I mean? Just, yeah, your hands let me, let me see your hands. Yeah, yeah, how can you? Tiny hands. Yeah, you can't oh, dude, dunk. Yeah. No, I could, I could jump up and slam it down. You oh. can alley-oop. No, I could dunk the basketball. I know. I know. <laughs> and, <laughs> no. Can you dunk? None of one men's no. ball. No, no, no. Dude, I, I just, I, Joe gets honestly, it. Honestly, Joe gets honestly, it. Honestly, a slightly, a slightly def, not like deflated, but like a fully. We had two different balls for our high school. Like the Nike ones had a little deeper. Yeah, the same team manager from the Patriots. So I could get. Yeah, I could deflated. get into the grooves a little better and do it. And an alley oop I could catch, which was way easier. But dude, even your voice right now is in total. Yeah, no, it's like rationalization like, tone. But anyway. No, you can dunk. You can dunk. I don't think I've ever but, seen you dunk. Could. Honestly, it's got to be the right thing. It's a total just like wind up like in a game. No. And, and honestly, the, the true dunk is a drop step, two hand slam. If you can do that, you're dunk. Dude, yeah, me and yeah. Chad have just been watching this Shaquille O'Neal clip where he dunks on some like white dude in the 90s. And oh. then he like, he hangs on the rim and he just totally puts his balls on the guy. Oh, I've seen that dude. <laughs> like for as long as he can. And then he <laughs> throws the guy down. Yes. Like just like, like totally little brothers him. And then he points at the guy. <laughs> Yeah. And runs on the court and the white guy gets up and he's so mad. I just stop calling him the white guy. And he goes, he just looks at Shaq all pissed, takes a ball and just hucks it at him. Yeah. Who's the player? He looks like, oh, I forget who that player is. Was it for the guy on the Nets or something like that? <laughs> Fuck. Or <Chris laughs> Dudley. They, they see, you see him he's like, Fuck you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck it's amazing. you. <laughs> Shaq just doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Dude, Shaq's oh, so dominant, man. People forget how dominant. I love Shaq. Yeah. Love Shaq. He's your favorite. I love him. He loves you too, right? He loves me, dude. He calls me Joel. He knows me by the wrong name. Hey, Joel. He goes, Joel, I go, bless you. I go, bless you, Mr. O'Neal. You valet him? Yeah. Nice. Didn't he see Good you place. outside the valet and he remembered you? Saw me at the Grove, dude. He was like there, like promoting, like he like does, you know, like a million commercials and stuff. He was doing like Carnival Cruise Line promotion or something like that, dude. And I'm coming down the escalator. And so I'm like at eye level with him because I'm on the escalator. And he looks over and he's like in the middle of signing an autograph. And he goes, Joel. <laughs> and I was like, bless you, Mr. O'Neill. It's amazing, so cool. dude. And then he came in. He was super nice. He's like, how you doing? How, how's the family? He's like, I hope to see you guys soon. Like, yeah. And he, he, he like my, he's like met like the valet family. And I was like, dude, we're great, man. We'll see you soon. He's like, cool. It was Isn't, awesome. I felt that's very really cool. cool. Isn't the weirdest thing about Shaq now how he hates every player? that is kind of similar to him. Like if someone's like a big man and they're athletic, but or even worse if they're not athletic, but if they're just big, but they don't have like good basketball skills, he'll always be like, I don't like that guy. He doesn't have any post moves. Dude, he's, he's dadding weak. them. Yeah, and it's kind of like you can yeah. see he doesn't like them because they have the traits that he got picked on for. Yeah. They were probably a bit unfair to him. Totally. Yeah, totally. There's stuff that he, everything barring free throws, but like something that he dominated or was good at or a weakness in his game that he saw, he'll hate a guy for it. And he'll be like, look, I just want them to be better. I just want like the love. And it's like, you can kind of tell there's a little bit of. He hated Dwight Howard. Hated Dwight. But I hated Dwight for a while too. Then he redeemed himself. Dude, girls thought Dwight was hot. That always kind of surprised me. I know. Christina thought, Christina and Katie thought he was hot. Yeah. Now, he's a good looking dude. But of all the NBA players, I thought maybe he was like too big. Yeah. Like Kobe, D Wade. That's where, that's where I would have gone if I was fucking. Right. <laughs> Yeah. You, you <laughs> fuck Kobe? Smooth. I, yeah, we probably not actually. Uh, but I'd go with D Wade. Oh, yeah. you'd go with D Wade? Yeah. Over Kobe? If you were to get fucked by one of them? Well, Kobe got accused of rape. Oh, right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if I were to get fucked by an NBA player, I think it'd be Chris Weber. That's a good pick, dude. Yeah. Really good pick. I'd get railed by him. Dude, I'm impressed by your basketball knowledge and by your Heard sexual taste. Heard my new bowls banging your mom. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> one of the best lines of all time. <laughs> Celtic pride, dude. That's a funny movie. Daniel Stern. Love Daniel Stern. Yeah. Probably should have had a bigger Bush But he gets, he gets good parts now. Yeah. They'll Bush cast him in like an indie movie as like the, the like hipster girl's dad. Love that good. Yeah. Or like a detective on NCIS or something like that. He could do that. Dude, I would do that for sure. What? Be like a detective on an NCIS show. Oh, that'd be sick. It'd be super. I fun. mean, Hawaii Five O was amazing. But John Mulaney has that joke yeah. where he's like, the the victim suffered from an anal contusion. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's like, they had fecal matter in her ear, and he's like, this is all stuff I heard at two o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> watching <laughs> SVU. Yeah. You're telling me this dude gets off to little girls in pigtails? How's he doing? I think he's out. Of he's Rio. out. He's out of Rio. He's doing good. good oh yeah, him. I forgot he yeah. did that. That was nuts. Yeah. I, I, he just seemed like such a put together person. But it can happen to anyone. Yeah, I, I watched his uh, Seth Meyers clip. There's a Seth Meyers clip from him, in from him in like November, and he did seem a little bit off. But maybe I'm just projecting. I you mean, know, I'm projecting is the right word. But maybe I'm just you know saying like, oh, because he's in rehab a month later. He was definitely on coke then. <laughs> but a lot of the comments though are people. Being I mean, like, comments are yeah. They're yeah. like mad at Seth. They're like, I can't believe you did this to your friend Seth and like put him on when he was really? like. I'm like, I don't think he. I don't yeah, think he, did. Yeah. he probably ran into him like five minutes before they started. And was like, oh fuck. Yeah. 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 He's running his monologue in the hallway and he like shakes his hand before the show. He's like, all right, thanks for coming out. Like, can we get anything else? Well, then well, he, sorry, go ahead. I, I always pictured Mulaney's substance abuse issues similar to like mine, where I'm like, yeah, you know, I sometimes you know. I, it's a problem and people are like all right <laughs> like you, you don't see it because you're right. just so yeah it kind of almost yeah. reads like maturity like yeah you just were making like uh you were so focused on other things that you, you were cutting away anything that was a detriment even if it wasn't as severe as it is for a lot of people yeah and it's like Mulaney's super blacked out he, he just can't picture him really you know destroying shit or his life because yeah, we I mean? never saw him like that too it, yeah it's not like steve-o where there's like literal footage of him like huffing paint yeah so now when you see steve-o you're like it's so triumphant yeah you're like holy fuck yeah with melania you're always like did you really party that hard right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but obviously <laughs> it's obviously yeah. yeah it's an issue yeah well i hope he's all right i, I gotta pee real quick yeah let's take a little guys, break keep, keep chatting. how long have we been going i gotta pee Aaron? too okay yeah let's get to the next part Guys, I'm interrupting this podcast to let you know once again that we are brought to you by Helix Sleep. Guys, uh, I was super resistant to getting, uh, to trying this mattress because I had a mattress that was firm. I loved it. It was awesome. Um, and then Helix sent us a mattress. I moved into a new place and I was like, you know what? I'm going to put the Helix Sleep on my bed frame, test it out. I still have the old mattress. What up? Then I sleep in that mattress and holy tomatoes, holy freaking Joe's, the head of Joe's uh, (laughs) piece. (laughs) I had the best sleep of my life. No joke. Helix is amazing. I'm not, I'm not joshing with you guys. Helix is awesome. And you guys can have the best night of your life. Best sleep of your life. If you hit up Helix and take their two minute sleep quiz because it'll personalize the mattress to you. I took it super easy and the mattress is perfect. Um, and I've been having great nights of sleep. I, I've been having great dreams too. I had a dream that I, you know, um, ate Froyo with Elizabeth Hurley the other night. So I don't think I would have had that without Helix. What do you think, Aaron? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh now, guys it's cool we can now see aaron during the the recording and aaron thank you for coming to yeah there he is thank you for coming to help out with the um with to to with the rec- coming to jt's place for this um yeah so you can take the helix quiz it's awesome soft medium firm are you a sleeper on your side do you sleep on your back do you sleep on your stomach do you move around all night helix has got the mattress for you um and so if you're looking for a mattress take the quiz Order the mattress you match to. It'll come right to your door. Ship for free. Mattresses are huge, so shipping for free, that's a huge deal. Helix is awesome, guys. Trust me on this one. You'll have a great night's sleep, but don't take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. Jabwam. 
So go to helixsleep.com slash go deep. Take the two minute sleep quiz. And they'll match you to a customized mattress. that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10 year warranty. You gotta try it out. 100 nights, risk free. And they're offering up to 200 bones off all mattress orders. And two free two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash go deep. And we're also brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped, thank you so much for keeping our trims peed, for looking after our hogs, for making sure that our dongs are looking fresh and clean because you have genitalia. It could be a dong or a vagina. And I can most assuredly promise you that you have pubes and unless you have alopecia. But do are they? I don't know. Never mind. Is that a thing where you don't have hair? Is alopecia you have more hair? If you have alopecia, do you no, have pubes I have still? More. You have no hair. No. Oh, okay. Well, are those those shorts too? No, that's good are, to know. So Manscaped is dedicated to helping you level up your full body grooming game. They have the Perfect Package 3.0 kit. Comes with the Essential Lawnmower 3.0 waterproof cordless body trimmer. A ton of other liquid formulations to round out your grooming routine. It's the best trimmer on the market for those of you in need of a chest or ball shave. Um, they You can adjust it to the length of your like of your liking. You know, it's spring. You maybe want to switch it up. You know, if you're going on spring break, maybe you want to go completely bald. Or maybe you want to give some flow in there. That's up to you if you buy Manscaped. Uh, the Lomar 3.0. You can use the Crop Cleanser Body Wash to keep your hair and skin feeling healthy and fresh. The Perfect Package that has Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. Epic. Um, crop Reviver Ball Toner. Uh, spray on Testy Toner that's designed to give your boys a little slice of heaven. And for a limited time, subscribers get two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag, $39 value add. And the patented high-performance reduced chafing Manscaped boxers. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code GODEEP20 at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code GODEEP20 at Manscaped.com. Say aloha to your new beautiful balls with Manscaped. All right. Nice, dude. Guys, should we get into the next part? (laughs) Yeah. All right, let's answer some questions. Get oh, that, brother. Nice. Ooh, what are you Get drinking there. there, Strider? It's a little fruit smash, hard salty, berry blast, dude. Nice. Is it delicious? Working out tonight, huh? Fruit smash. Let's smash. Oh, I looked at the time. I was like, Am I gonna have the energy to work out? I'm nah, out you're, tomorrow. You're no, nah, dude. It's fun dude. to work out with a buzz. I think it's easier. Really? I mean, I wouldn't recommend it all the time, but yeah, I might just go body weight then, so I'm not slinging anything around. Smart. Yeah, don't operate heavy machinery. Exactly. JT, you know are, you, are you drinking Fruit Smash? Too? I'm drinking Fruit Smash Pink Lemonade, and I have to say it's one of the best beverages I've ever had. Nice. Now, is that because Chad and me are about to be in commercials for them? No, it's actually really good. This is tasty. It's absolutely Oh, the Pink Lemonade is phenomenal. Yeah. The raspberry is dank. And this is like... New Belgium. You know, this is like New Belgium, and this is, we've heard from basically our whole... Everyone we know that has tried it, they love it. JT just chugged it. Yeah, yeah fast just fish, chugged. Right? Um, guys, if you want the hot new seltzer on the market that tastes delicious, and that's, I mean, it's like refreshing it. And it yeah. Hit up Fruit Smash New Belgium. and Smash. Then the New Belgium just needs to make a dank Ippa, dude. That's oh, yeah, awesome. for sure. Oh, new Belgium sick. does. Maybe you should make a Strider's dank Ippa. Oh, that'd maybe be that's, awesome. Maybe that's, dude, that's in the works for sure. That's coming. Maybe that's next. Let's go. I, uh, Let's get vertical. Oh, and guys, check out our merch too. Jay, uh, Strider's rocking the Dank IPA shirt. We got Stoke Nation ones. We got Going Deep shirts. We got Chibwa shirts, Lift Heavy, Feel Heavy. We need to get a Joe shirt. Maybe that's next. Joe shirt. That'd be sick. What, what would your ideal Joe shirt say or look like? Fear the Hog. Fear the Hog. Maybe like Joe, like, you know, the Mr. Clean logo? Yeah. But it's Joe and it just says Fear the Hog. Nice. I always Mr. wanted to have a Joe Weed shirt too. Oh, yeah. That'd be good. Oh, it's a great call. Dude, should we do some questions? Yeah. Okay, wife turned vegan and doesn't look like she's going back. Send help. Compadres. My wife has been vegan the last two years, and there are no signs of her coming back to the good side. (laughs) We've been together for over 10 years, and she was vegetarian for the longest time until she went vegan two years ago. She does it for ethical reasons, which I understand, 
but I'm a firm believer in everything in moderation. I don't think living a life where you can't crush a nice penne alle vodka or a nice margarita pizza once a fiscal quarter leads to happiness. Other couples we are friends with don't verbalize it, but I'm starting to get a sense that they are annoyed when they go out with us because my wife always has to choose a place that caters to vegans. What do I do? Any advice is welcome. Thanks. Brando. It's tough. I mean, my dang fiance is vegetarian. <laughs> Vegan would be more difficult. But it's different. LA is so easy. Every place in LA basically has a vegan option or a sl- like a menu on the side. So if you're in a different city, I could see where like it could be annoying for other people. Yeah, LA, it. it's easy. You've sort of embraced it though, haven't you? Like you eat meat less now, right? Oh yeah, I love it. I love it. But vegetarian, way easier. Even the meal, the things he said, like a margarita or a penne alla vodka, those are dank and those are vegetarian. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. easy. It's easier for me to not eat meat than it would be to not eat like as a vegetarian. Yeah. But vegan, bro, no cheese, no eggs, no fun. Yeah, well, so do, you, do you think he can appeal to her and be like, hey, babe, I think it's starting to affect our social calendar. So do you think you'd be able to like hit like a Ruth Chris and just like, you know, be satisfied with some sides of carrots and and uh, Brussels sprouts? Yeah, they probably got dank, bro. They probably have broccoli with some dank garlic on there. Tell them to hold the butter. Yeah, you got to tell them to hold the butter though. Yeah, yeah I guess I'm, I'm, is she... Is she stoked on on vegan? Like, is, has she been happy with it? Because I guess sounds like it. Good you know, cue. if if she's really happy with it, then I, I would yeah, I would just try to get her to possibly just not talk about it, <laughs> just do it. You know, because uh, uh, like if you, if you have a specific diet that makes you happy and that you feel like it really is working for you, then if a partner would be like, you got to change that up, I would get really annoyed yeah she should you kind of got to be stoked for her. yeah yeah because yep. like it's also said. she's doing something that's like i know it's affecting other people but really it's just her choice yeah and i guess uh, yeah i guess it, is she saying uh, it, he's saying that people are getting annoyed because she talks about it or does she like shame them for not being vegan no none of that even and no one's even verbalized that they're annoyed with it although i could see why that'd be difficult but right I mean, is, I, is he just a little bummed that he can't like share pizza with her? I think it's more thing? him. Yeah. Right. Cause he's kind of reading into it with the other people. And I think he's kind of reaching for like extra justification. Yeah. Well, maybe you could see the people giving looks when she orders the, can I get the plant, uh, whatever, you know, the, yeah. yeah. The, anything with plants, you know, and people are just like, mm. dude, what if we find out one day that like plants have souls too? They're living they probably do. Dude. Kale, dude. Then what are we allowed to, to eat? Take you out. Life eats life. Dude, I watched a Steve Rinella clip today where he gets attacked by a moose and then his friend, <laughs> he's like, you know, I shouldn't have walked up on it. Put two <laughs> shoots it twice. Really? But he's like, but they have a really strong thoracic cage. Yeah. And then he walks over and the, it, the gun doesn't go off and the moose hears the click and it just bum rushes him and it knocks him to the ground. His cameraman's a fucking beast. Yeah. He stays on the moose the whole time. Really? Yeah, actually, I don't even know how the cameraman captured all this because then the camera whips to his buddy and his buddy shoots the moose right before it like mauls him. Really? Damn. And then he's like, I don't regret it. You know, it was a great experience being attacked by a moose. <laughs> Dude, I heard moose like when you see him in real life or like the size of this room. They're yeah. the most dangerous oh, uh, wilderness animal. Yeah. They kill more people than anything. We've talked about that before, right? Mm-hmm. I think hippos get the most people. That's what I've heard. Yeah, so that technically is a how to be a millionaire. Dude, time. that would suck to get dude, killed by a hippo. Yeah. A moose is six foot, like at its leg, dude. And then it's an animal on top of that. Yeah, are are hippos fast? Like, are they just? I think faster I think than so, us. Yeah. Really? It's crazy how many like fat animals are faster than us. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like elephants should not be faster than humans. Why are alligators and crocodiles so fast with those little legs? Yeah, they scurry. Yeah, dude, yeah. yeah. They're nature though. Yeah, they're wild. They have to be. True. Yep. We're docile creatures. Yeah. Wheat domesticated us. Yeah, wheat? Wheat. Yeah. wheat. That's what Yuval Harari says. Yeah. That little known book. Yeah. Sapi- Everybody reps sapiens. Oh, yeah. Dude, uh, Influencers yeah. read sapiens, dude. It, it's, it's a good book. Do you, yeah. do you think... I was listening to Joe Rogan. You're talking about aliens and he's talking about like a futurist and stuff. Do you, do you think eventually we'll become, you know, just like little tiny bodies with big heads? hairless absolutely are we are we going towards that well like looking like aliens this is the yeah. first i've heard of it but i'm in but don't you think that's where we're kind of heading i mean with iphones and stuff because we're, we're using our muscles less and less yeah there's no use i mean we could literally just you know we could sit and zoom <laughs> and, and get you know 
order uh, Instacart. We don't have to do anything. Yeah, no, I've heard that yeah. evolution has like a direction that might yeah. even like supersede our environment. So someone yeah. was saying like aliens might look a lot like us. Cause yeah. like, although I, they'd have to have the same environmental factors, I guess. Yeah. But they were basically saying that evolution heads in the same direction. Yeah. So maybe. That's crazy. Dude, so this guy, you know what I think he's got to do? I think he needs, because we were just having such a nice little bro down talking about various topics. Yeah. And you know, like Joe Rogan and aliens, that's pretty male specific, I guess, yeah. in his audience. I think this guy needs more bros. Right. Because mm. you don't want to change your wife from being vegan. That's cool that she's vegan. Like that's healthy. And it, you know, I yeah. do think it's more ethical Yeah, it, uh, with, with the knowledge that we have now at least. And then, but if you just have some play dates with your bros where you go to like a barbecue joint and just, and if you come home stinking home like brisket, she should accept you the same way you accept her for tasting like lentils all the time. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. I made lentil chili with my dang fiance last night. Dang. Nice. And I like it when a couple has different philosophies on stuff. I think that's smart. Heck yeah. Could you date a vegan? Yeah. That's good. She's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Middle school problems. Dude, this is a question that's been on my mind forever, and I just thought to ask the Stoke Lords. So my homie was dating another one of my friends, but we weren't that good friends. And it was a stupid as fuck middle school relationship. But then they broke up, and I was friends with both of them. Still, then the chick started spreading like bad rumors behind my boy's back and she was just being a total re -knob. Anyways, I just ghosted the chick. I basically pretend I didn't know her. I wasn't mean or anything. I just kept my distance and didn't return her text. Anyway, then it turned out that the chick's mom cuts my mom's hair and the girl told her mom that I was ghosting her to be mean and didn't say anything about the bad shit. So now my mom is pissed at me and often calls me an asshole and a disappointment. My her mom, mom? The girl's mom? No, his own mom. Whoa. She rides hard for the sisters. Yeah. I guess I got two questions. What do I do with the chick and how can I deal with the mean comments from my mom? Thanks dudes. Podcast gets me fired up. You have a good one. Your youngest Stoker Carter. Um, is he being literal about middle school problems or is that? Yeah, I think he's in middle school. Oh, I can't comment. Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's too young. That's fair. Carter, I would say... You know, I, 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 and when I was your age, I used to engage in this kind of like, oh, I'm going to be mean to this person because they were mean, you know, and it's, you guys are all, be, we'll all be friends in like five years. So I would say, you know, um, I don't know what to tell you to do. I guess, I, I, I guess, I guess, I guess I would say, you know, have your friends back, but. It's against your best interest to engage in sort of vindictive behavior to try and, you know, get back at a girl because she, you know, it's like that that doesn't that's not going to get you anywhere in, in, a, in a positive way. I would say, you know, just be respectful towards her. Maybe say like, hey, I don't appreciate you talking about my friend that way, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. You yeah, know? I don't I, I would say, hey, like I I. Be careful what you tell your mom because it's coming back to my mom in yeah. kind of in distorted ways. Right, it's right. It's affecting our relationship. And then I would follow up with your mom and say, hey, and be respectful to your mom, but be like, hey, mom, I think you're kind of getting a skewed perspective on what happened. And I think you're kind of even overreacting to that skewed perspective. And the way you're talking to me is kind of hurting my feelings. And I, I need you to be supportive of me, even when I am wrong sometimes. But in this specific case, I don't think I am. So please don't call me an asshole or a douche or a dick or anything like that because I really want to Because I'm in proud. middle school. And yeah. Yeah, dude. Her mom needs the, his mom needs the biggest lesson in this scenario. Here. Totally. I'd say, dude, what's his kid's name? Dylan? Carter. Carter? Nice. Imagine, just go skateboarding, dude. You're all good. Dude. Yeah. I don't want to worry about any of this shit. Yeah, no just one's going to be like in a few years beside your mom at this point. Yeah. Although maybe your neighbors, you go to the same high school. I don't know. Go to the skate park, find the bowl. And drop it. Just drop it, dude. Just freaking chill, dude. Grow your hair out, dude. Spike it, dude. Yeah, dude. Experiment with gel, and then go to the yeah, go to the dude. school dance. You know, with oh. like just two buttons buttoned, and just exactly. Dude, a style reinvention oh. and a yeah. good use of gel can change your whole trajectory. Yeah. My friend Chris, mm -hmm. he got he left our high school, and then he started wearing sport coats, and he found a new way to style his hair. Right. And he was like the bell of the ball for like three months after that. Oh, yeah. Like, I was like, I remember he wasn't hooking up with girls, and everyone was like, dude, you hear Chris hooked up with Holly? And I was like, what? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, you got to check him out now. He's got like a whole new vibe. Wow. And he did. Yeah. That's awesome. 
Yeah, Carter, you should wear a vest. That's what you should do. Dude, Start yeah, wearing a vest. vest. Get a poofy vest. vest rule. Get, yeah, get a Patagonia investor vest. Just wear it around. Be yeah. so cool that your mom even has to be like, holy shit, I totally misappraised you. Like I was calling you an asshole the other day and I realize now you're just like super full of swagger and it's intimidating people. Yeah. yeah. And tell your mom, just real confident, look at her go, mom, you look lovely today. I want to see you later. Just say stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. flip it on her a little Learned bit. You, with more kindness. With kindness. Yeah. Get more business with kindness. Mom, you look fabulous. That'd when your bad. mom goes, hey, don't be an asshole, go, <laughs> Mom, it's cute when you overreact like that. Give her a kiss yeah. on the cheek. Say, I love yeah. you. Mom, there's two sides to every story. Do you want to hear my side of the story before you start making claims like that? Okay, come on. Yeah, and then make your mom some pancakes. Yeah. Yeah, I made you breakfast. Yeah. Also, you know, dude, every family's different too. I mean, it sounds pretty heavy when you're like, this kid's mom's calling him an asshole, but like maybe it's one of those houses where like everyone cusses and like bust balls. Like my mom would call me an asshole and stuff. And I, I don't remember it now. It doesn't like, yeah, it I had happens. to dig deep to like, and not I even in a traumatic too, way, but just like, I was like, oh yeah, my mom used to talk shit to me. Yeah. And, and this kid's mom might, and that shit happens, but also, you know, as a young kid, maybe he, that he's not, you know, writing it properly. I was going to say articulating, but he's writing in of like, maybe he felt like his mom called him an ass or made him feel that way, but maybe didn't actually use those words. Hmm. I don't know, but we got to just choose yeah. to what's on the paper. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm just hoping that she didn't. Dang. And if she did, I'm sorry, dude, you're chill. Just go skateboard dude, and learn how to pop of it. Yeah, I realize we can't high five from. Dude, that's true. Whoa! Yeah, would you guys want to like? We're gonna up? have to switch. We're, maybe next time we sit different. You maybe I yeah. sit here. You sit here. Smart. Joe's there, and then we just. I felt that. Yeah, maybe in the edit you can. As soon as I go like this, cut to Striders. Yeah, all these podcasts have graphics now. Have you Are seen they? that on like YouTube? No. Yeah, like a lot of these podcasts, they have like they'll have accompanying images for what they're talking about. Oh, right, 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 right. Like the production values like leveled up a little bit. Damn. Like yeah. instead of like the viral bars at top, like they've got like fucking like it'll be like they're, they're talking about like you know Richard Simmons or something. Then it's him doing like his jazzercise class over here while they talk about it. Well, oh, podcasting yeah. is now a visual medium. It's like getting more like yeah, like uh, t the production values going up. We need to get a three D podcasting going in here. That's what's gonna be next, dude. Just fucking coming at you, dude. I'm a lo-fi guy. You know what I mean? I think that's part of the charm. I of like podcasts. the replacements. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Listen to it. You get a 3D of Joe's dog. Wow. Whoa. So we're talking yeah, about a monster picture here. We're doing like a King Kong kind of Godzilla thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, this, this is how the podcast intro should start. It's space, empty space. And you hear, you know, in Star Wars, how you see the big ship just go past you. Right. Yeah. yeah. But in this instance... It's just just dumb. Oh, nice! Very smart. With and a rolled up newspaper next to it for scale. Right. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Very yeah. good idea. Or, Very yeah, good or idea. maybe maybe it like Thank you. ejaculates and the planet explodes. Oh, nice. Maybe or it covers just... it in a <laughs> just... in a storm or in a cold weather right, apocalypse. Right. Planet Hoth. Yeah. You know, yeah. two thousand one Space Odyssey. I never understood that film. I never seen it all the way through. Yeah, it's kind of tough yeah, to watch all the way through. I gotta watch it. But the monolithic, the monolith in it, if you've seen it, that's just Joe's dawn. Oh, think of that that structure is just Joe's. It's Joe's. And dumb. that bone that they throw in the air during that famous shot about like the evolution of technology. Yeah. you know, man for gorilla first using or ape using first using a, a tool. Yeah, yeah, for weaponry and domination. Right. It's Joe's he, dawn. Do you yeah, guys, that's he, Joe's bone. Do you guys know the movie <laughs> The Fifth Element? Of yes, course. Yeah. 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 Very through and through. You know what the fifth element is? It's no. Joe's Dom. Joe's Dom. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Aaron is being such a trooper. I didn't have an extra chair yeah. in my apartment. It's pretty bare bones operation. So he's he's sitting on my bench. Yeah, he's on a bench press. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. and right now he's got it at an incline level. If he were to use it, were you about to say that? Yeah, say, he'd, yeah be exactly. he'd be inclined. He'd be hitting some shoulder press. Yeah, he'd be having two thirty-five dumbbells thrown him overhead. <laughs> Dude, you just did an Omar with forty-fives. Beastly, my second one. That's awesome. Aaron, it hurt my neck sore, my fucking everything's sore. It's good your neck sore. Aaron, when did you first hear about Joe's dog? <laughs> did you, oh, say you didn't it hear about it as a child? Yeah, weren't you at it like a, you were just at a restaurant and people were talking about it nearby? Yeah. Your old spaghetti factory? You, you were at an airport I think the word rounded because Yeah, of it? I think the word was out already. You're at O'Hare? Before this podcast. People will ask me now, they're like, have you seen Joe's dog? I'm like, no one's seen it. Yeah. I'm like, it's you just, just we it. just all trust Joe. What do you mean? No one's yeah, seen. You, well, you don't look right into the well, sun. Dude. No one. No one who. Oh, no one who goodness. talks yeah. about it on camera has. Yeah. Seen it. No, a lot of people have seen it. No, not a lot. 
All right. But a medium amount. When did you first know? Football? High school? What? They had a big dick, dude. Well. I don't know. They had a big People fucking would, dick. They would, women would always say it. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's so I don't cool. know how, because you don't know that yours is big. No, I know mine's very small. <laughs> well, no, but he, you don't know, like, I don't know what, you, were, you don't you, know how big they're supposed to be. They, only right. they know, because they see a lot of them. The women you're with have seen a lot of dicks. Well, I don't know. I, you know what I mean? I feel you. <laughs> yeah, there's just. Uh, I was thinking you, you'd find you, out in a locker room scenario. I don't. That's look, where I found I out I had look. a small penis. Yeah, Joe wore a wetsuit. No, I just in didn't. The locker room. We didn't look. I didn't look at the other guy. How did you not look? I looked. Well, in high school, I don't think you're fully developed anyway. I think you. There's. <laughs> you're pretty close. Grow after yeah, that anyway. Was. Yeah, and you, I think you always kind of think of your own dick as like a kid dick. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you're a kid, you first see your dad's or something like that. You're like, oh, that's like a man's dick, and my dick will never be that big. It gets out of pull pretty fast. Totally. Well, and I think then when you look at it from the angle, from the top down, it looks pretty pretty small. Or maybe it is just small. Yeah, no. I, yeah. I feel, you, feel you on that. I imagine, yeah, Joe, you just see yours. Your dick has a horizon, huh? Like a fucking. Yeah, Joe, yeah, when you get yeah. shrinkage, does it go, is it more like a Polish sausage? <laughs> if. <laughs> If Joe's got a heart on, uh, a Canadian family can sun can get protection from the sun underneath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Have you guys sure. ever heard the riddle about Joe's cock? <laughs> if Joe gets a boner in California <laughs> and a boner at Florida at the same time, they're both traveling. I don't know. Like, Creates a tornado yeah. in Kansas. Yeah. yeah go on. <laughs> That's cool. All right, let's uh, neighbor drama. What's up, Stoke Nation? My upstairs neighbor and I have been getting to know each other over the months with brief but friendly conversations by the front door. There's an impenetrable language barrier as he's from India and I can only speak English. So our conversations would mostly consist of a polite hello or good to see you, followed by a wave and a smile. It's the best. However, a few weeks back, I decided we were friendly enough for me to point at the cigarette in his hand and say, careful, dude, those things will kill you. Ooh, I don't think it's a bad move, I think. Yeah. Since then, he has been avoiding me and not answering when I knock on his door. <laughs> when I ask about his whereabouts, no one has an answer. Yesterday, I saw him oh, peeking wow. at me through the window and returned to hiding. I was baffled. Replaying our last interaction, it has occurred to me that I that when I warned him against the dangers of nicotine addiction, he must have misinterpreted it as a death threat. Help me out, Chan J2. I do not want to kill him, but what other options are there? Our neighborly exchanges always brighten my day, but I must strike before he kills me. Thanks for any advice, Tripod. <laughs> Dude, nice name, Tripod. Um, yeah, I would say uh, I don't know. This is weird. Yeah, you got to find a way to make it right. I guess you know. I don't. He's yeah. thinking that the misinterpretation is that this guy thought that he says he's gonna kill him. Yeah, and the na- he thinks the neighbor thinks he's gonna. Yeah. I think the neighbor just thinks he was like not chill for like kind of judging him for smoking. Exactly. Yeah, he probably just thinks but, he's lame now. Yeah. And he's chilling. Although the him hiding and looking, then going back to hiding, maybe that's where he got the idea. Anyway, he's telling himself stories in his own head. He's creating his own narrative. He's just got to have an honest talk with this dude. Excuse me, sorry. Pounding the salt. You, you know what I think he's got to do? Get some shades, preferably Ray-Ban. Mm. Get a leather jacket. Some American spirits. Yeah. Kick your foot up against the wall next to his door. Knock on the door. Light up. And have an extra cig ready to go. There you go. Dude, I was, I was yeah. gonna. That's a much better scene than I was portraying. But I was literally like, just smoke cigarettes now in front of the guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Just, every time you walk by, I'm just light up and be like, hey. Then to quote Kramer, <laughs> if he if he if he comes if he asks for a cigarette, he's like, you smoke and be like, I suck him down like Coca Cola. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, yeah. if you want him to really think you're cool, maybe just next time he comes out of his door, you're just sitting in the atrium and just have a belt around your arm. <laughs> Shoot up yeah. heroin, and then yeah. maybe don't actually yeah, shoot up heroin because I don't want you to, you know, I don't want him to get hooked. Yeah, but uh, you're like, hey, guy, you're like, hey, I, uh, I'm sorry, I was just about to do some heroin. Yeah, yeah. Or if he asks you, you'd be like, what is that? And be like, it's a vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> or you just look at me casually, go, stuff will kill me, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> or, or you can just go up to him, but hey, man, I feel like you felt like I judged you for smoking cigarettes, and I'm really sorry for that. Live your life, bro. That might be too intense, but there is something kind of nice about just cutting to the quick. Yeah. Yeah. I like that too. Who oh, yeah. 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 Who gives you? 
Or you know, you, dude, you could pack a fat dap. Just get, just get some Copenhagen or some skull mint, maybe a lime. Pack a fat dap. Maybe do a double mouth guard to let them know you mean business. So Ooh. to the point where you can't even speak. You know, so you, you got two fat daps. Oh, you call it daps? Huh? Yeah, uh, upper and lower deck. And he's just like, what's up, dude? And you're like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Because yeah. you can't even speak because you have so much dap in your mouth. And you're like, I'm so fucking buzzed. Yep. Probably the habit that, like, all the cool guys I know did that I was like, this is one of the most disgusting. Like, when you yeah. go to someone's apartment yeah, and they just have, like, a glass sitting there and you're like, what's in the glass? Disgusting. And then you look in and it's just yeah. like... Of oil spill, you're like, what the? F-? No, don't yeah. drink that. Don't drink that. That's my chew. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. oil. It does. It's disgusting. Well, yeah. I, I went golfing with a guy yesterday with my dad, and you know, he's a tall guy. Probably he probably around like sixty, tall but like muscular. Love it. Packing a fat dap, and he's like, yeah, I play polo. I was like, oh, this guy's awesome. Polo? He plays polo. Dude, yeah, it's cool. remarkable sport. You're yeah. swinging mallets on a horse. Yeah, there's just some guys who are like. Where they, you know, they the just, yeah, they, yeah, they're just packing fat daps, riding horses, swinging mallets, and you're like, you can do anything you want. That's weird too, because I, I think of polo as like an aristocracy sport, so it's right. odd to me that they would do dip, because that feels to me more like a, uh, yeah, like a blue collar kind of habit. Yeah, I was like, how'd you get yeah. into polo? He's like, yeah, I hung out with these cool cowboy dudes in Carmel, and I was like, oh, this guy's awesome. People still play polo. So basically, he wanted to be cool. Water like polo is fun. Yeah. Yeah, That's water awesome. polo. From Marco Polo. I played Marco Polo. Yeah. Great game. Did you like being it in tag or did you like being the person chased? It's a very obvious question. No one <laughs> likes being it. Yeah, you don't want to be it. Joe, is it hard to play hide and seek because of your dong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't hide. <laughs> they would seek me instantly. <laughs> Could you be hiding under the bed and like the mattress would be like poking through the middle of the tent? <laughs> yeah. In yeah, the California king bed that your freaking strong buttress of a cock could support. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, we, I would have to pay it play like uh, at night, ghost in the graveyard. Then, oh, yeah, then I could hide. Yeah. Right, right. Fade in, interior, submarine, galley, water leak bus in, 20,000 feet under the ocean. Everyone's going to die. Only way to plug it, get Joe hard. We've got to get him horny now, fellas. Yeah. What are we going to do? Lieutenant, if you do not get him horny in the next 20 seconds, we are all dead. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Hopefully the lieutenant Joe, would be Joe's that, like, uh, I can't get hard in front the, of everyone. Uh, Nobody or, look. Who is the, I've upgraded to who's only the fans. from uh, Jag. Who's got a nice Who's smut that? magazine? <laughs> she was really hot. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, dude, how did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, is she that hot? Yeah, she's, dude. For you to yeah. reference Jag and for you to know, dude, she's, that was she's a very lead. attractive. Yeah, that was like, like gorgeous. Like, that's a beautiful yeah. woman. Yeah, as a kid, that show was on. We yeah, yeah, like as a kid, and I was like, yeah. "Whoa, that's an attractive, very that's a woman." And she was wearing yeah. like a you know like a naval. Oh yeah, outfit. You know, like I'm into the wow, nautical look. Like, unbelievable, yeah. dude. Jag, I never watched it, but it yeah, always looked. Her. It was like a few good men. I love Jag. Yeah, Jag is Yeah, now everyone knows I looked her up. I was trying to be. I was trying to be discreet. Here we go. Yeah, she's a lovely lady. Yeah, yeah. No. Joe, whenever you go on a boat or a cruise and they try to give you a lifeguard jacket, do you have to let them know that you already have a flotation device? <laughs> I, yeah, I have a card. <laughs> Your card-carrying member of the NRA? Yeah, she's beautiful. She's got a rifle on you. I deleted it again. Hold on. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Um, yeah, he's not. All right, this is from one late bloomer to another. Gina O'Reilly. Hey, Chad and JT. First, I want to thank you for all your vulnerability on the show. It's really helped me become more com- comfortable confronting my own mental health issues and blockages in my relationships. Speaking of which, I've been seeing this guy for a few months and he's a bit older than me. He's 29 and I'm 22. And we really care about each other. But I'm having a hard time with our sexual relationship. See, I was what you consider a late bloomer and he is definitely not. He has never made me feel like I don't know what I'm doing and even goes so far to reassure me that we are very compatible in the bedroom. But I just can't help but think that I am not enough for him. Or that because of my lack of experience, I'm not fulfilling his sexual needs. Any advice for confronting these feelings as fellow late bloomers? Thank you for all you do. Much love, Lady Stoker. Do you know what I would do? I think I would be really honest with this guy. I think I would talk to him and say, hey, like I'm having some insecurities. Because he's probably a chill dude. And then you guys could work through it together. And just just opening up those lines of communication, I think, will... uh, 
And I think he'll appreciate that you're being honest with him. Like, I have to think that in either situation, I'd be like, hey, that's chill. We're all good. We can figure this out. Yeah, but I appreciate your candor. And then maybe, because I'm sure he's having a great time, but I think sometimes just going straight at the thing is is helpful. Yeah. So she she's feeling insecure because uh, she feels he's like more she, experienced. Yeah. Yeah, I would just I would, I would just tell him be honest with him and just be like, yeah, you know, I um I feel a little bit inexperienced. I feel a little bit nervous and insecure. And uh, I just need, you know, a helping hand through this stuff. Yeah. If I were the guy, I'd be like, oh, for sure. Right? Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd be like, I'd be like, thank you for telling me that. Yeah. Well, if and he's, he's going to feed his anything, ego too. You... you know what I mean? Like, yeah. She's like, you're just such a dynamo. I feel like out of my league. Like, if you hear that from a partner, you're like, oh, thank you for saying that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you know, totally. Well, no big deal. You know, I just had a few good experiences. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. You have nothing to fear. What do you guys think? Yeah. I think that'd be, that would be cool if you. Yeah, a guy would like want to hear that. Like, yeah, right. I'll, I'll help you out with this. Yeah, I think that's going to engender a lot. <laughs> or if he's not even saying that. anything, then he maybe doesn't even notice anything wrong. I don't know. Yeah, I like that we all. I assumed immediately this guy wasn't a nice guy because of the age differential. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't too bad. Sure. And I'm thinking she's a late bloomer, which makes me think maybe she's a virgin, is what she's saying. Mm. And so maybe she's not comfortable. And is this guy trying to push her in the bedroom a little too much? <laughs> you just made this guy the biggest creep. Yeah, that's immediately where my brain went. I'm like, it, it, like all you guys assumed he was a nice guy, which right. is like, well, that's based good. off like, her description, not? though. I mean, I do agree. Like, if it, she's not, she's not dating this guy. She called him her boyfriend or anything like that. Yeah, I think they she are. Just dating. said I'm seeing this guy. Let me see. Because they're like, oh, my boyfriend or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, mm. they're not dating. And I've been seeing this guy for a few months. She said, but right after that, she says, and we really care about each other. Okay, yeah. Good. That's good. Okay. Okay. And, and he, he, I don't know, dude, I've seen too much TV. I'm like, this guy's a fucking, I don't, player. I don't know what I'm doing. And <laughs> what I'm thinking. but she says that he, he has never made me feel like I don't know what I'm doing. And even goes so far as to reassure me that we are very compatible in the bedroom. So I don't know. I'm based, I, I hear where you're coming from, but based on available. Exactly. I, and I it's her side of it. The worst. Exactly. Yeah. But all I'm saying is just be aware of that. Be savvy to it. Don't and don't let anyone do make you do anything you're not comfortable with. Dude, I know I'm friends with this girl, and she was like, "I'll ask her if I can post this." But she went to see her podiatrist, and then he like messaged her afterwards. Mm. She's like 23, and he messaged her afterwards and was like, "He was like, uh, hey, I think you're such a ray of sunshine. Like you really make the office such a better place. I think you're such a wonderful person. Like thank you so much for coming in. I really look forward to seeing you more." And I was like, "That's weird, dude." And then she was like, no, he's just being nice. And I was like, no doctor has ever been that nice to me. To a patient? She's yeah. She's a patient? She's she, a patient. She sounds like she works there or something. And then, and then the so place. she's like, yeah. she, so she, <laughs> she was getting out of a relationship and then she ended up going to hang out with the podiatrist. And then she was like, you know what? I'm out of a relationship. I don't want to see anybody for a while. And then the podiatrist was like, no worries. Again, I think you're such a wonderful person. I'm really rooting for you. And when oh. I heard that he said he was rooting for her, I was like, Oh shut up, dude! dude yeah. I was like, and I was like, no, this guy's a weasel. I'm and feeling then, like yeah, this guy what might a be lie. a weasel on this question because she's just got to be aware of it. There's snakes in the grass. These things go hand in hand, and they know how to operate. I don't mm-hmm. know, dude. I've just seen too much TV, man. Maybe right. when I'm watching, no, you may have a point. But it's 29 to 22. I mean, it's, it's, it's no, no. I'm not saying yeah. it's a big age difference or anything, but it's like, it is. It is, but it's not like no. I I wouldn't. I've known 29 year olds who dated 22 year olds. Yeah, that's were, not crazy. It wasn't what like, is he doing that's so much crazier in bed that she's not into? Or like, like that she can't do? Or maybe it's he's a real not. Thing. Uh, Experience yeah. is a real thing. Or maybe he's totally, not. Totally. Right? Okay, yeah. that's something else. He might have a mental block. It might be something like that. Why are we putting it on him? I, that's what I'm saying. I know I'm coming at this saying, I'm putting too much on this guy and I don't know why. It's weird. It's I a, get it though. You're looking yeah. out for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, be careful. Yeah, so maybe either be honest with him, or if he's a douche, say sayonara. Yeah, but he sounds like a good guy. Yeah, he's yeah. He sounds he sounds like a good guy. We're on the fence. Yeah, you I, just I might mean, not. Be you guys are convincing. On, on the, I, the I immediately. I, 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 look, I think you got to call the cops. I think you got to set up a sting operation yeah. on this pedophile. Give me his number. And I think we got to put him in the ground. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to call the fucking lords. Is this guy a dad? And we're going to beat his fucking ass, dude. <laughs> Say he's a dad. Take him to Orange County. We're going to fucking jump him outside of a pavilion. Gina, I need you to run. Done, dude. I need you to get your stuff. I need you to change your name. I need you. Have you seen Jennifer Lopez in enough? I need you to get out of there. That's yeah. what you're doing, dude. <laughs> That's a good movie. That's a really good movie. Except she learns how to fight in like a week. 
Oh yeah, yeah. The training montage. The training's cool, but the, like <laughs> eyes. The the, the the eye poke with the lemon. Yeah, I always remember that. <clears throat> and as sure as he is a coward, he will kick you when you are down on the ground. And oh, then he yeah. does go to do that. Yeah, that is a good movie. That's a good movie. Jayla, she can self defense. I've never had. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like I would love martial arts, but I've, I've just never, never been into. You'd it. be really yeah. good at it. You think so? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're thanks. disciplined. Yeah, you seem like yeah. you'd be a karate guy. Really? Yeah. Oh, thanks. Is that like a low-key insult? No, I think he just like would look good in the the white role. Oh, dude, thank you, Joe. The, the gee. Jake's one of the best. Yeah, the gee. Thanks, Joe. I love you. Thanks. I love you. Chad, you right. ready for the next part? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> um, Who's your legend of the week, dog? Um... My legend of the week is the. So I, I drove from Northern California this morning, to L.A. Beast. And I I took the ninety nine. Uh, so my legend of the week is the Central California Valley because, dude, it was so beautiful and just I went I went to like Lodi to Stockton, uh, which like aren't don't have the greatest reputation, but like the the fields like the farms and all that stuff, you know. I saw like the Hilo tangerines and and all that stuff. It was it was like. It was amazing. It was sort of like what the characters in Grapes of Wrath are picturing. You know, California is like, that's what it looked like today driving down. I was that's like, this awesome. is incredible. And I was just like, so I like, I was just driving down just, you know. What does that long, go through? What's the city? I went through like Stockton and Lodi. That was like farther up north. And I don't even, I don't even really know. I didn't go through Bakersfield, but. Oh, so it's like in the middle of the state. Middle of California, middle of the state. And then you go to the Grapevine to LA. Oh, all right. Um, But it was like, I felt like I was on a ride soaring over California. Like it was just so like picturesque and and just kind of like peaceful. And it was, I I drove early this morning. So like the sun was coming up. And it was just like, I was like, man, this state is, um, it's beautiful. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It was pretty incredible. And I was just like, I think as as an older dude, I'm not that old, but you know, yeah, you know, but as you mature, you just have more of an appreciation for like the earth and nature and yeah, totally and all that shit. Isn't it funny when you're like nine and you see that stuff and everyone's yeah. like, "Look at those mountains," and you're kind of like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah you're like I want to yeah. see a city." But then something clicks in your brain when you get older and you're like, "Yeah, it's beautiful." It's beautiful. What have you heard a nine year old right, yeah. do that though? Look at those mountains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Just look at those things. If you could yeah. appreciate that, hey, Dad. Yeah, but- shut up, real quick. Turn on the radio. <laughs> Yeah, see the white cap on those mountains. <laughs> Dude, how do you apologize? <laughs> if you get a gang to beat up your dad, like, what? Do you, how do you apologize to your dad? You're like, Dad, sorry I threw that party, and sorry Donovan and his buddies beat the shit out of you. Yeah. <laughs> your dad's like got a mangled face. Yeah, he's like, it's <laughs> okay, son. Old. Shit happens. <laughs> mangled face. <laughs> he can't. His eyes are all puffed up. You can't see. He's, he's like, got like a face cast on. Who were those guys? <laughs> he's like. Dad, you don't think this is going to affect the practice, right? Like, people won't be weird when you're doing their dentistry on him. You're Mr. Uh, you're Mr. Roberts got his ass kicked by a bunch of sixteen year olds. Dr. Kramer got his ass handed to him. <laughs> some kid hit him with some kid hit him with a round. He comes in kid. on crutches. Yeah. yeah he, he spray painted his passed out body. I got so. beat up by a rabid thirteen year old. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the juice. Some steroid junkie. There are kids on juice. Honey, OC thirteen. Honey. Oh my god. Dude, there was there, a, there was a kid nicknamed Juice because he came to high school as a freshman. Was like, I'm on steroids. Call me Juice. <laughs> oh my god. And I guess one time a teacher, yeah. I think he like ended up murdering someone. Uh, but I, I guess a teacher got mad at him in class and he went, Oh really, Mrs. Pendergraft? <laughs> and he dropped down and just started doing push-ups. <laughs> 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 She was just telling the Pythagorean theorem. I was like, see, it is not C squared. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I messed up too. We, we jumped into the legend. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, we got beef. Yeah. Do you want to do, you wanna do your you beef? You want me to do beef? Yeah, yeah. Can you do that? My beef of the week. I mean, this relates. Uh, this kid, Aria, who lied in sixth grade about the fact that his jizz could fly 10 feet. Whoa. And, you know, I, I, this was like a tender moment for me because I. I wasn't jizzing yet. I think it was like fifth, sixth grade. You know, it was like you, pubes are like, I'm, I was getting inklings of pubes, but I was a late bloomer in that regard. And this kid, Aria, just like waltzes in and he's like, he's like yeah, I can jizz 10 feet. And as a, as a young, growing man, that just like, you're just like, oh, I'm so far behind. I can't even jizz yet, you know? And so my beef is with him for obviously lying. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't I'm, think he could do that? 
No. Launch 10 feet? I think so. You think so? Yes. No, 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 not exactly. everyone has what you have. 10 feet? It's only like a free throw. Do you see that kid right. from LSU win the high jump and the long jump? The long, us thinking about how far you could jizz load made me think about the long jump. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess 10 feet, you're right. 10 feet is far, dude. Do you know how fast it's jizz good. shoots out of your pipe at? 30. Yeah, right, 28, yeah. Did you tell me that? No, that's because I always thought it was 28. Yeah. 28 miles an hour? Mm -hmm. How do they, do they use a gun? They just change the ratio. Yeah. Like you just, I don't they know, got a pitcher's gun out, out like, there, like like Brendan Fraser in the Scout. <laughs> yeah, they got an, it's an old guy smoking. Did you ever see the, kids movie got the heat. Scout? That's a weird movie. I never saw with it. Albert Brooks. No, I never saw the Scout. I was thinking of the Ref with De Niro. We'll do a Patreon episode. We'll talk about it. No, no, the Ref. The ref. No, the, the ref. Ref's with Dennis Leary. Dennis Leary. No, but isn't that's the, uh, the that's fan. the fan? The fan. That's a weird. Fan. One. That's a weird one, dude. Yeah. Fan. Yeah, the Ref. I don't, I don't he sells that knives, dude. You can't trust a knife salesman. No, 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 no. Snake oil. Who's your beef of the week? Shit. My beef of the week. I've had a pretty good week, dude. So I mean, I'm pretty much just basically chilling, dude. So, mm, what's pissed me off, dude? Maybe my beef of the week is just um, my body. My beef of the week, dude, is probably just my my neck, dude, from lifting 45s, dude. And I'm I'm stoked to be getting after it, lifting heavy like that, dude. But honestly, I'm like, dude, my neck keep up with the rest of my body, you know? Like, what's the deal? Do I gotta do like neck exercises, dude? It's pissing me off, dude. I feel you, dude. It's pissing me off, dude. There's nothing worse worse than neck. Pain. Yeah. You're like, what are you doing, dude? What is the neck? Why do we still have such vulnerable, bullshit ass? connectors of our spines to our heads mr toomey my freshman yeah. year health teacher told me it's because we were never supposed to walk upright really? we weren't supposed to be bipeds we're supposed okay. to be moving on all fours yeah so like oh. the curvature of our spine it's like evolved but yeah. if you look at it like you can see like the vestigial parts that we were supposed to move in another way really like a tailbone do you think eventually it just like the neck will sort of chode out so we it's it's safer i wish it could be another yeah. trap like you have a trap there like you know goldberg the wrestler Right. You could just be more jacked. Sometimes in dreams, I think I'm on all fours moving around. You ever have that? No. That sounds demonic. All right, never mind. <laughs> I can see that for you. Yeah, I don't either. Sounds yeah. Very Do you think that's your primal self saying, <laughs> saying that it needs to live a little bit more? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm i trying to remember, think if I'm like on a scooter, maybe, or if I'm. That's yeah, I think I'm riding tight. something. Or you have wheels on your hands and feet. I don't know. Like an ATV. It's You're not... ATVing. This is a good dream. Do you ever want someone to yeah, ride Yeah, it's not you? weird. That's just how I'm moving around. I'm just like... You know Robert Crumb, know. the cartoonist? He didn't like regular sex. He liked when his girlfriend rode, rode around on his back in the apartment. Or he rode around on her back. Okay, so what if this guy is asking the girl to do something like that? Gina? Yeah. I'm messing around. <laughs> and, he's, and she's like, I'm not quite as experienced as he is, but he's yeah, just like doing like something weird, weird, bizarre off the... Yeah, he's like, look, off, I like to put on robes. My buddies show up. They, chant, they do incantations while we make love. What's going on? Come on. Dude, <laughs> yeah, totally. good movie. Good Dude, casting. They, they don't really make those anymore. Like movies about like sadomasochistic relationships. That was like a big genre for a while. We should bring it back. Yeah, it should. I miss those pervy movies. They what kind of made me, They the, opened up my boundaries a little bit. Secretary. The piano teacher. That's like a really. Postman always rings twice. Dude. Dude. It's a movie, dude. Well, Jessica Lang. Mm -hmm. She's awesome. Um. Joe, who's your beef of the week? Uh, it's this guy named, uh, his name is, uh, I keep messing with his name, or getting, or yeah, it's Jesus Camargo Corrales. He's a guy, he's a 25 years old uh, Cubs minor league prospect. He was caught with uh, 21 pounds of meth. <laughs> in uh and he used a, it was in all, and it was in a Cubs uh, duffel bag, which... You know, it's like use use your own shit if you're mm. gonna be moved. Don't don't do that to the Cubs where you're gonna use their their logo and move your meth. You know, move your meth in your own luggage. You know, don't denigrate the Cubs like that. Should all drugs be legal though? I don't know. I don't even know what meth does, so meth I don't think has any redeeming qualities. Yeah. It doesn't redeem anything. Like shrooms and weed even though it's weed i was talking about this as like some people who have done shrooms regularly and i'm square but like uh 
friggin are saying like weed will mess them up more than shrooms sometimes like it's so potent mm. but i'm like if it's natural then i'm down if it's legal but like meth is like you got to get like a friggin they almost like blow up your house making it or like i'm just picturing crystal meth it's like all weird chemicals mm-hmm. yeah it just doesn't just sound the process good. too yeah. much going on yeah i mean you get a lot of errands done uh, well on it yeah true you done meth no I just but you said, speed, you get a little, some errands done. Is speed a version of meth? Yeah, I've ac- I've accidentally done that. I think. That was Crank. Weird. It was weird. It was a weird morning. You did it in the morning. Crank. Yeah. Well, I did at night, but <laughs> I was, was kind of like out of my mind and to the, in my bed in the morning, just like, and not fun. Yeah. We didn't. We can cut them, but didn't you say your bros had to like tie you down or something like that? That was on shrooms. Oh. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. What were you doing when they tied you down? (laughs) Um, Well, I thought my brother was trying to kill me. And then I just, I like, (laughs) I come out of like a blackout, which is like misery. Yeah, with my dong out for some reason. Just like, dude, I was like, I was on another dimension. I thought my brother, like, he looked like Bart Simpson. And my dong was out for some reason. Makes total sense. We've never spoken about it since. Amazing. And he he like tied me up in the chair because I was like I, I was like throwing shit, and and he's like and I just remember just being in a chair, and then I like woke up and we haven't spoken about it since. That's awesome. But yeah, I remember he's trying. Uh, big takeaways: my brother, I'm, I was convinced he was trying to kill me. He looked like Bart Simpson, and at some point I pulled my cock out. That's what a bad trip in shrooms. Yeah. So don't do shrooms, guys. It's a good cautionary tale. Or don't do too many. Don't do, you know, organ blue caps and eyeball it oh, those with your friend like... Sean. <laughs> eyeball and organ blue caps. Organ so blue caps. That's good advice. Yeah, those sound. Yeah, yeah. Those will get you, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, he's like, dude, it's organ blue caps. I was like, okay, sweet. I'm like, how much is an eighth? He's like, just eat, just eat all that. <laughs> all and then my that. brother comes home. I was the reason I freaked out is because my brother came out. I wasn't expecting him to come home. And you know, like shrimps take, you know, like 45 minutes to kick in. But these took, yeah, after like 10, 15 minutes, I was like, because we were going to drive to Chipotle, get Chipotle. And I started driving. I was like, backed right back in the parking spot. I was like, oh, crap. Like, I, mama. Yeah. Like, I, and then, and then I was just like in a corner. And he's like, what's going on? And then blackout. Wake up tied to a chair. Wow. Yeah. It's like Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. It was pretty gnarly. I wonder if it changed my brain chemistry. Maybe. I almost feel like it, I mean, I have no idea, but I feel like it probably just opened up a side of yourself that needed to come out. Probably, yeah. And then you got that energy out. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one way to look But Louis C.K. on Howard Stern, he said he did a lot of acid. I mean, he said he did a lot, but he did a lot of acid when he was like in eighth grade. And he's like, no, I think it messed up my brain permanently. Really? I mean, it depends yeah. on your brain chemistry, right? Like, you know, yeah. they tell, yeah. they say people with like mental health stuff that when they do psychedelics, it can kick that, it can kick up that other stuff. Oh, really? But then some people say it like saves their life. It's hard to know. Yeah. I can't tell. Maybe I was more outgoing after. I don't know. It's like crypto. It's, versus, it's too volatile. Dude, that's so yeah. funny you say because I, like I, I bought shrooms a couple weeks ago and the guy pulled up and I actually knew him. I got his number through somebody else. I was like, oh, what's up? And then we started talking. I was like, what are you up to? He's like, I'm moving to Oregon. I'm going to start drilling for Ethereum. And I was like, so you've been doing a lot of these, huh? He has <laughs> had a drug uh, thing? No, Ethereum, it's like, uh, it's like Bitcoin. Oh. How do you drill for it on like the internet? Or it's not drill. What's the like phrase mining? that they use? Mining, mining sorry. Oh. Yeah. Drilling is... Uh, it's when, you're in, it's when you're in a, your favorite room in your house when your fiance is out on a run. Yeah. He was drilling to Ethereum is what he said. He was... <laughs> I, would, I drill to Elysium. <laughs> very nice um my beef of the week is with the is with the people who think if you change your mind a lot you're indecisive but i think you can actually be decisively indecisive Hmm. and the root of this isn't even like a big life thing but i like watching tv on and this is gonna be my babe of the week but i like watching tv on um on cable because i like to switch around from like movie to movie i'm like oh i'll watch the color of money for 10 minutes okay and then i'll watch top gun and i'll just dip in and out i don't like to I don't like watching on streaming things. I don't like to commit to the same thing for it's, it's too much pressure on the choice. 
And then someone's like, oh, because you're indecisive. And I was like, no, 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 I'm, I'm decisively indecisive. I like to switch around. I like getting multiple streams of different uh, movies or, or different entertainment. It's, it makes my brain feel better. Hmm. So that's my beef. Yeah. Hmm. I find that with like, um, you know, current events or something. People are like, what's your take on it? And I'm, I'm like, oh, I need a few days to really figure it out because a lot of times I'm like, oh, I see both, you know, if whether, you know, matter what, if it's, you know, uh, what's a good example? If it's Meghan Markle. Yeah, if it's Meghan Markle, it's like, well, I, I need time to really assess. People were pissed about our Meghan Markle take. Yeah. They were like, you guys were way fucked. They didn't specify why we were off base, but they were like, you should let me call into the pod and tell you why you guys fucked up the Meghan Markle thing. I was like, did we even say anything? Yeah. I was like, we almost had, like, we were just like, you know, I feel bad for her, but I feel like there's people you could feel worse for. Right, right, right. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> that's funny. But no, I hear you. Sometimes it's like people like they put a false urgency on it. They're like, you need to have a take on this now. Yeah. Maybe it's not like a, I don't know what, I, like, but I, I agree with you that it's just like, I, I changed my mind a lot on things if the facts change so does my opinion what about you sir yeah i think winston churchill said that yeah am i making sense yeah totally. yeah we're I'm all staring at you sense. though it's a lot of yeah it's a lot of pressure <laughs> like, i don't know mr i was just that's i'm indecisive about what i was saying interesting well are you decisive about who your babe of the week is yeah very decisive on this one it's my dad what up dad babe um my dad's just a man. I spent the weekend with my dad. He's awesome. Uh, smartest guy I know. He's just, uh, he's a hand surgeon, very capable. I, I got a splinter in my finger over the weekend. And I was like, there's no better person to do this around than you. Because I was like, I was like, you know what? It's time to put you to the test. Take this splinter out. And he got his glasses on and he just dig, dug it out. It was awesome. That's so nice. Yeah. Where was it and, in your finger? Uh, just my pointer finger, like on the tip. Did you guys make eye I contact? Get, I can get those on my own. No, he's very <laughs> focused. He's very focused, and I'm like, "You're a good surgeon." He's like, "I know." <laughs> he's very like he he just he loves his work, um. But he's just the best, like super sweet, hard, super hard worker. Just like, but very just caring and loves his family and um doesn't have time for nonsense you know do you watch tv why would i watch tv <laughs> what did he say you showed him nomad land right you were trying to put should, oh yeah we watched nomad land and i'm like what do you think of nomad land he's like it's an oscar movie it's sad <laughs> <laughs> i don't know he's just the best so he's my babe love you dad yeah that's awesome big ups to mr kroger dr kroger the doc strides who's your uh, babe of the week Babe of the week's got to be my freaking dang fiance, dude. Um, nice. Dude, she's just freaking being a beast, dude. Just beasting through grad school, dude. Beasting through work, dude. Just freaking beasting through fun new recipes together, dude. Just straight up walking our dog like a beast, dude. And just freaking chilling, dude. So she's got to be a freaking my babe of the week's just got to be honestly my straight up beast of the week, dude. My freaking dang, be a G, freaking dang fiance, dude. Sorry, nice. I'm, I'm still adjusting to not saying GF, dude. I have a, I have a, in our apartment. We have an area where um, we walk out of like our little bedroom, then through a door, like past the kitchen, and that's where I tax my my fiance with a smooch, like a like a troll. I say you got to pay the toll, and it's a smooch. And I would always say this is where my GF gets taxed, and I still say it because I'm so used to saying it. And she goes, "No, it's not. Not your girlfriend. Your girlfriend's lost in the desert." And I go, "You're right. Left her out there." Oh, that's how you answer. describe the propose and out at Joshua Tree. Yeah, I go lost my G, lost my GF somewhere out in the desert. Don't care though. Found my fiance. Maybe speech. you go out there on weekends. You have an affair. Oh, say, oh, hey, look who I found out here in the rocks. Next, I know exactly where to find her. Arch Rock, 150, far, 150 yards west of that heart shaped rock. Well, let's go. How are you gonna smooch after you say I do? Oh, probably just like. Yeah, you gotta go tongue. Just tongue dart. Yeah. Kidding, dude. For the viewers at for the viewers tongue, at home, yeah. that was a harsh tongue dart. <laughs> that might be involved later in the evening, but you know, I always think back to the movie uh, Wedding Singer. You know, it's church kiss. It's got to be church. You know, what do you do? I'm just gonna feel in the moment and probably look not cool doing it, like I did with the proposal. I'm just gonna be like, and you know, maybe we'll have some fun practicing it, dude. 
maybe I'll just be like, we should practice. Maybe that's going to be my big thing of the wedding planning. Have fun. Be like, well, we still got to practice our smooch. Maybe at every venue that I got to go, hold on. Maybe yeah. make the person watch that showing us, make them a little bit uncomfortable. I like to do that now. Oh, so you know who's the person to officiate to? You go, they got to watch you make out. Oh, that's a good call. And how do they react? Yep. And they go, all right, is this one? Is this one? Okay. They're like, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Whoever that dude was that said I smacked my lips too much, dude, you want to know what the kiss is going to sound like, motherfucker, dude? <laughs> dude, that guy's an like animal. He like leaves comments where he's like, you guys, just, why don't you just chomp into the mic for two hours? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's savage. Dude. He's pissed. Dude, He's dude, fucking he pissed. Sound when I eat a sweet potato into the mic, dude. Oh, dude, when you eat a sweet potato, yeah. I got, I got my ass beat. <laughs> it's just comment after comment. Way to eat into the mic, you fucking asshole. <laughs> it was tough with the zooms because you're at home. You know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't, so I didn't yeah. realize. I, I can't. Yeah, you yeah. can't hear yourself. I haven't even listened back to it, so it's probably horrendous because <laughs> people are just. But, uh, but I was thinking, you know, spice things up when she has to pay the toll. Mm. You should do different characters. And the next one, greaser. Leather jacket, shades, sig, unlit, just to be cool. Oh, yeah. And you're just like, you got to pay the toll. I love that. And then you'll probably get tongue action after that. That's a freaking fire call. I'm going to probably do that first thing in the morning. Surprise her. Get up a little bit early. She'll be like, oh, hey, I got to go. Yeah. Cruise now. Golf. She- golf. We wear a leather jacket to golf. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we should say <laughs> Strider is the most popular human being on the planet. Like you're just beloved by all. And I don't think he'll mind me saying this, but the guy who runs the podcast company, Mike Bertolino, legend. Oh, that's my bro. What's up, dude? We all went golfing with him. Mm-hmm. But now you, you're kind of like his golfing mate now, right? Look, I've been honored to join a group. I wouldn't say, I, I wouldn't go as far as to say, I'm his golfing mate. He plays with. He's, but if he he's needs a, a guy, guy, if he needs a guy, you're top of the list. He'll, he'll, I'm, I'm in the Rolodex. I'm in the Rolodex there. And when we had our other job where we all worked together at the office, I think you were the only one who got invited to the Super Bowl party. To the Super Bowl party that the producer was having. Oh, nice. <laughs> it was great, dude. You got an invite? <laughs> dude, I got an invite. Was amazing. Did you guys not get invited? To the I don't think I was invited. Go, did you get invited to the Super Bowl party? I, don't remember. I think I, don't I was. Think so. I think I was near you when she invited you. And then she was like, oh, and JT, you can cruise too if you want. I was like, yeah, yeah, maybe I'll cruise, yeah. The thing is, we do Super Bowl at our boy Joe's. Right. There's no way we're not doing Super Bowl. And I was like, thank you so much. But I'm a yes man. That's part of it. I'm too much of a yes man. No, don't make it. Come on. Come on. And I go, yeah, maybe I'll show up like at halftime. There's no way I was showing up at halftime. I think, I don't know. I think if people are going on a trip and they're like, hey, we need to bring someone on the trip. They want to bring you. Yeah. I appreciate that, dude. A boy's trip invite is, is huge. It's very telling. And if I get invited on a new group of bros like a boys trip that's huge but then again it's like i don't know you know what it is we kind of talked about this when we first moved to la because we have a good group of high school buddies you know and like in our freaking crew right here the freaking chill on of stoke over here dude and no court court or quintuple of stoke that's true. oh yeah the quintuple of stoke dude it's true freaking um but we weren't like because it was weird when a dude would try to make friends with us I'd be like, what's going on with it? Like, what do you, you don't have your boys already? And this is when I was younger, but I was like, not everyone has their squad yet, you know? So it's strange, but I think not, it's almost like when guys, when girl, girl, guys get a girlfriend, they're like, man, girls can sense I've got a girlfriend now. And like, they, they're coming up and talking to me now, but cause you're not putting out that any desperate energy subconsciously or consciously. Same, I think goes with bros. I've got a good squad. I think, you know, when Mike wants to golf, I'm like, yeah, dude, I was going to play maybe over at Rustic, but you want to do, Oh, you want to do tear hair on Sunday? Yeah, I'm down. I'll warm up at Rustic. Let's go. He's fired up, dude. You know, he's playing. We're playing. It's just it's natural. I think that modest and humble uh, reasoning is part of the reason you're such a, well, I'm the a mayor. welcome addition. And then once I'm mayor, I will take over. And once I have taken over, everyone will suck the tip of my dick. I think they all know it's heading there. <laughs> everyone's, everyone's honored to be on that trajectory. <laughs> running a platform what up <laughs> joe who's your baby of the week um well, i could say Catherine bell or i was gonna say or were you gonna say the person that built this studio or no she was gonna be my legend of the week. oh okay yeah. then i won't say it then i'll say uh Catherine bell uh is my baby of the week she's probably the hottest woman i've ever seen on screen now that i've uh, been thinking about it the last uh 15 minutes or so <laughs> Um, so a lot of her pictures and, 
you know, she had a body yaddy, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, uh, yeah. And she was just beautiful. Like, like striders are over here said, and yeah, it was like, wow. Magical. What's body yaddy? It's just from a song. Megan the Stallion. Yeah. Oh, body yaddy, body yaddy. Body yaddy, 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 yaddy. Does it mean good body? I think so, right? Yeah, like a banging body or something like a fit fan. Uh, my baby of the week is is watching TV the old fashioned way on cable and switching between channels. I think it's <laughs> I think it's the ideal way to watch to watch stuff. That might just be nostalgia, but I I really do think it's a I don't know. I like that. Yeah, who wants to watch a whole movie for two hours? You kind of get the gist in increments anyway. So I'd rather bop around and you know watch like the Bone Collector and then switch to Miami Vice and mm -hmm. then. Maybe dance over to Sports Center and then, you know, just kind of rotate. Yeah. I'll check into a hotel hour at a time. Not to spend time with a, a lady in the industry, but to just watch TV the old fashioned way. Which industry? Sex industry. Usually you get a hotel for an hour or two uh, for a prostitute. Dude, when I hadn't lost my virginity, I tried to lose it to a, a prostitute at a hotel. Mm -hmm. I got a hotel and uh, the girl canceled. And was like, hey, I'm sending my friend instead. So it wasn't like the girl I had even picked. Whoa. And then she showed up and I was just getting hammered at the hotel bar. I did like six like little mini drinks. And she came in and she's like, God, it smells in here. <laughs> Cause I just was sweating up from, I think, nervousness. And the first thing she did when she came in, she checked the closet to make sure I didn't have like a friend in there. Whoa. And I was like, man, this is a scary gig. And then yeah. we made out. It's a pretty sloppy kiss, if I'm being honest. I don't think she was that into me. <laughs> and then we tried to have sex and I couldn't get hard. I was like too nervous and probably yeah. masturbating too much at the time. And then she was like, so what do you want to do? And I was like, I don't know. I felt kind of bad. And she's like, I can peg you. Nice. And then I was like, I don't think I'm, you know, I'm a white belt right now. I'm not trying to, yeah, I'm not, that feels like a 10 years in kind of thing to my sexual career. And then I was like, no, no, here's all your money. You can head out. And then I took an Uber to Whole Foods and just got a tuna melt. Dude. Yeah. You don't want to get fucked before you fuck. Yeah, or if you do, you do. But it, for me, it was just like, I you know, I, I'm, I'm traditionalist and, you know, the kind of raised in a conventional sexual uh, trajectory. Yeah, your goal was to yeah. figure out how this thing fits over into that thing, into not the, how that he, thing's going to go into the other thing. Right. I was like, I need to, yeah. I, you know, this is the, my parents expect me to take this route and I feel like <laughs> I got to do right by them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, her name was Midnight. I don't even know if that was a real name. Midnight Lee. One time I was at a strip club and the uh, stripper was giving me a lap dance. I was sitting back, cool as fuck. What up? And actually I wasn't. I was like, this is like, oh. And uh, and I was like, cool. What's your what's your name? Like thinking I was supposed to ask him. She's like, Ginger. And then I was like, but I, and maybe I was like too nervous. And then uh, I was like, cool. What's your middle name? Like thinking I was being clever. <laughs> and then she's like, what's your middle, what's your middle name? name? I have no idea why I'm thinking that. And then she goes, Lee and then takes my hand and like makes it go easier and I was like whoa that's a common mistake nice. I remember when I was 17 we had dancers come over to Ross's house one time like half of us had braces <laughs> Dude, yeah, and bro. the stripper uh the dancer uh security guy first he comes out he goes all right fellas everybody get calm sit down the girls are getting ready they're gonna come out they're gonna put on an amazing show first off I will not be checking for IDs we're all men here we all know what we want. We all know the rules. We're like, nice, nice, nice. And he goes, secondly, I will not be playing rap music because oh, yeah. in rap music, <laughs> African-American people refer to themselves as the N-word. And I think that is disrespectful to themselves. So we will only be playing like Poison and Van Halen. And we were like, okay, dude. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> what a strange lesson. Yeah. We were like, what? Yeah, we we're like, dude, your like, dumb sociological perspective is not needed, bro. Let's just, uh, we wouldn't even have noticed. Not yeah. that they can influence a group of young minds whose ideas I am not checking in about the poison right now. Let me just go ahead. No other adult will listen to me talk about these things, so you 16-year-olds are in for one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Chad, who's your? Oh, we did your legend of the week. Yeah, Central California oh, yeah. Valley. Oh fuck yeah, Strider, who's your legend of the week? Dude, my legend of the week has got to be um. This is a free endorsement here, but dude, um, <clears throat> M Bark Vet, and my beef of the week was a little bit bad earlier. Um, so this ties into my beef a little bit, but 
Embark, you get a DNA test. And so we found out what Sonny is because he's a little rescue. What up? And it just says Terrier. Turns out he is a 0% Terrier, dude. Really? I don't know if Terrier like means like a bunch of dogs or like some dogs are retrievers, but like, bro, he's part German Shepherd, Chihuahua, Poodle, Shih really? Tzu, uh, something called like a Sao Po or something Holy like that. Shit. So, yeah, bro. And, and then 14% like Super Mutt, which just means an amalgamation of everything. And maybe of that 14%, maybe a little Terrier in there. Yeah. But these places, they got no idea. All I know is it's 100% cute, dude. Yeah. So, Sonny's my little legend, dude. No matter who he is, he's perfect, dude. Doesn't matter who you are, dude, what your DNA is, dude. Just make good freaking choices and be a straight up chiller like Sonny. He makes good choices listening and sitting, dude. And then my beef would just be, you know, people telling your dog that it's a terrier and it's not. Hmm. You talk to, to Sonny, and you're like, dude, I thought you were a terrier. He's like, nah, dog. Yeah, he knew. Everything, player. Yeah, he's everything but. I'm kind of yeah. upset that he's a chihuahua. I'm not a big chihuahua guy. Yeah. <laughs> And Shih Tzu, because that's Shmuel's dog. Yeah. Dude, right? He's mainly Shih Tzu. He's like 21% Shih Tzu. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think if he met Garf, he would boke him? Sonny's very Garf good. is the Shmuel's dog. I believe that maybe the Shmuel's dog has unchill energy, because I believe that the dog reflects the owner's energy. Like, that's why pit bulls get a bad rap. You know, dudes who want to fight and be chill have pit bulls, you know? And then their dogs can kind of be dicks. Um but uh, no, Sonny would be chill. Let me tell you, if there's beef, it wouldn't be Sonny. Sonny can go up to any dog. He just wants to play. Mm. But he's not going to get school. humped, dude. If he gets humped by another dog, he's going to hump back. So he's friendly to the schmoles. He'll be friendly. Yeah. Nice. Joe, who's your legend of the week? Uh, mine is uh, Luca Garza. He's the center for the University of Iowa Hawkeyes basketball team. Uh, back-to-back Big Ten player of the year. Uh, finished his career today with 36 points and a losing effort. Um, if there's a way to go out, that's the way to do it. I mean, he was uh, he was amazing, as he usually is, and uh, I think he's going to do great at the next level. Uh, he's got great footwork. You were talking about Shaq before. I think he has, he has the low post moves like Shaq, and I think he could do well in the NBA. Power drop step. Yeah. How big is he? 6'11". He's a handsome dude. He looks like Clark Kent. Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Speaking of which, Justice League. Did you watch the Snyder Cut? Almost. <laughs> Fell asleep three times. Everyone's falling asleep. Did you watch it, Aaron? How, old is, how long is it? Four hours. <laughs> it's four hours? It's four hours. Oh, I'm not Are you watched. nuts? Yeah. It's four hours. That's why, okay, because everyone was like, I'm, I'm like, it was everyone I talked to was watching it over multiple nights. Yeah, it's in parts, which is good. Like, it goes part, there's four parts, but like, yeah. Everyone's kind of a bad actor in that movie. We were talking about yeah, this. Yes, dude. It's so true. Henry Cavill, like, he's just a super hot Jack dude. Gal Gadot, yeah. super hot, very charismatic, Jack. but not a great actress. Like, the first Wonder Woman was like perfect for her. They like showcase like all of her, like, yeah. They just really put her in a position to, to succeed. Yeah. And, Oh, the, the Flash is actually a good actor. I like that guy. The guy from Perks of Being a Wallflower. Yeah, Ezra Miller. Yeah. Is that his name? But they don't give him anything to do. He just has like, he's just the guy who's like the wonder. And, and... Yeah. My legend of the week is uh, Julie. Julie's a good friend to all of us. And Julie uh, designed the podcast studio. And she did such a good job. And she got it done in like a week. It was yeah. incredible. She got this like wood like wall up in like a day. She's like, do you want a wood wall? I was like, yeah. And then I came home that night. It was up. I don't know how she did it. It's incredible. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And she she made such good choices with everything. I think it really fits our our Stoke aesthetic. And then, but she also classed it up, which I appreciate. Yeah, it's a it's a podcast studio that we can grow old and immature in. Oh hell yeah, yeah. yeah. So Julie, you're an awesome friend, and you're a wonderful designer. So thank you for everything. Yeah, thank you, Julie. What up? What up? Chat. What's your quote of the week? Oh shit. Uh, my quote of the week. It's going to come from the movie Torque, starring Martin Henderson and Ice Cube. Shane, his love interest, goes, what is it with you, Ford? Everywhere you go, everything turns to hell. Ford, in his cool, calm demeanor, goes, it's a talent I have. That's awesome. Good movie. Fast and the Furious on motorcycles. Great movie. Strider, what's your quote of the week? 
If you're lost, you can look and you will find me. Time after time. If you fall, I will catch you. I will be waiting. Time after time. Great freaking song, dude. Just This came on the radio today, dude. I was just bumping it, dude. A little Cindy Lauper time after time. I was like, dude, what a jam. She's a powerhouse. <sighs> what a just stoked. Just got me immediately stoked. I was in traffic. We're back, baby. JT, we were saying it earlier. LA's back. LA's back. You can LA's feel back. It. I was back. at the park yesterday. I was like, it's booming. Everyone <laughs> is we're everywhere. Booming. Everyone's everywhere. You can't find parking. It's unreal. I say back. unreal to myself out loud at least 10 times a day. That's how I know LA's back. LA's back. back. <laughs> we're it's back, back, baby. And I needed that stoke from Cindy Lauper just sitting, not moving for an hour in traffic. Just let's go. Joe, who's your, uh, sorry, what's your quote of the week? Uh, I got a quote from uh, Ernest Hemingway that's pretty cool. Beast. Um, he says, uh, always do sober what you said you'd do drunk. This will, That will teach you to keep your mouth shut. Nice. nice. Whoa, cool. that's great. Yeah. Ernest. Fuck yeah. Yeah, well done. This is a Steve Jobs quote from his book. Dude, the book is amazing. It's incredible. I mean, he's like an adopted kid. He's like smarter than his parents at seven. So he just bullies them into doing whatever he wants. Really? Like he's like, I want to go to a fancier high school that costs more money. And his parents are like, no, we don't think that's a good idea. He's like, these are all the reasons it is. Now you're going to do it. And then they wow. do it. <laughs> it's like, he's like an incredible, like social engineer. Um, but he said, it's better to be a pirate than to join the Navy. And I think that's true unless you're joining the actual Navy, which I think is an awesome thing to do. And we appreciate your service. But I think what he meant was more of like, it's better to be like a little bit, even if you're at a place that's like a regular business or conventional place, it's always good to think of yourself as a little bit like insurgent, I think. Mm, pirates are sick too. Yeah, they look out for each other and they gotta they gotta live by their wits. Yeah. And they don't fall into conventional dogma. You know what I mean? They're living outside the lines a little bit. Yeah. But they, don't actually like, you know, maraud and shit like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And they got tan too. So tan. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're few things more inspiring than giant depths tan in parts of the caribbean one True. i mean it's yeah. it's unbelievable what do you think johnny you depp would that be to like to talk world? to you for a couple hours giant depp yeah tough one-on-one -on -one hang i, I think know. it'd be like yeah i think um what would we talk about I'd probably talk about like guitars and for chocolate sure. That's what yeah. I assume. Yeah. What do you guys think you'd talk about? Like off menu items at a restaurant. Right. I don't know. I think Calm. we'd talk about like authors, but I think he would like get the books all wrong that they wrote and like misquote right, the them a lot. Thing. And I just yeah. nod and be like, yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. You talk about art and he'd be like, yeah, I like Picasso. And he'd be like, yeah, for sure. I was talking about the movie Nick of Time. It's a fucking tight ass. Dude, movie. I want to watch that. I was just thinking I about that movie. I watched it the other day. I rented it. That's a great movie. It's a great ass movie. Great movie. Walking. Great premise. Yeah. yeah. We're going to kill your kid unless you kill this senator. And it's like, you know. And it all happens fast. And it's all like, what is it? Ephemeral. In the nick of time. Yeah, yeah. It's all in the nick of time. It's great, dude. Smart movie, dude. It's just so funny. Bro. I was thinking about that movie. Bro. I rewatched it during quarantine. I was like, I want to watch this. I'm going to watch that tonight. Yeah. You know what I re originally watched that on? I think Laserdisc, dude. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I got it on Laserdisc. You, you know what I'd ask him? I'd be like, hey, did you ever have like a desire to just not finish the second half of Blow? Just like you're filming up until his peak, you know, and maybe you just said to the director, like, dude, I think it's, I think it's good right there. Let him get out on top. Yeah. yeah. I think the movie's so you know, true. hour in, well, let's cap it right there. And there's a couple of drug dealers who probably did get out at the right time and didn't yeah. suffer the sad downfall. Yeah. They just went like legit with their businesses. Yeah. But we never tell that story. No. <laughs> I would love that movie. Right. Be just All a guy who's just, just a drug dealer who... Has the best life ever, nothing bad. Happens. And is pretty responsible with his choices and understands yeah. when, yeah, the risk has exceeded what he needs. He's like, all right, I guess I'm out. And then the rest of the movie is his, him just like on blow having sex. Dude, yes. Nice. Yes. I remember when Blow and Traffic came out at the same time. And I, I didn't see either, but my parents were like, Blow, I like was, to get blow is better. Because yeah. my parents like to party. So they were like, Traffic's all right. Blow's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Chad, what's your phrase of the week for getting after it? Um, Dude, I think we can stop blow at this point. Nice. Whoa. Very true. Strider, what's your phrase of the week for getting after it? My phrase of the week for getting after it is clutched it. And that's a reference to playing Call of Duty when you get the dub, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Really? Oh, yeah, I just clutched that dub, dude. Clutched it, dude. Joe, what's your phrase to be freaking after? I don't know. These are so hard. <laughs> um, uh, spring is here. Let's uh, let's uh, if, let's find me a deer. I don't know. Amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. That was like, like a that was Dead Poet Society when he's yeah. like a shaggy tooth like a yeah. stranger. Like a deer, like a nice woman is what I mean, not a the animal. Nice. I don't know. My phrase of the week for getting after it is inspired by Johnny Depp. I just watched Donnie Brasco the other night, or parts mm-hmm. of it, because I was doing it the cable style way. And then um forget about it. Nice. It can mean anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like if you think Buick's better than a Cadillac, forget about it. Forget about it. Is that Ray Liotta saying that? Who's six doing that scene? Johnny Depp. Somebody's Johnny Depp's that. telling him that. It's dude. It's Johnny Depp, Paul Giamatti, and like uh, Tim Blake Nelson. You know the, the, the kind of buck tooth dude from a. Uh, uh, oh, con- oh, brother, brother Rado. Rado. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, the guy who start. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Buster yeah, Scruggs. and Buster Scruggs. Buster Scruggs. So it's like you're watching. You're like these are like three amazing actors, dude. Yeah, forget about it. Forget about it. Aaron, do you want to put a capstone on all this? You're a soldier, dude. Aaron is standing, Aaron guys, because the bench yeah, was uncomfortable. Yeah. He's been here for like four hours setting this place up. Yeah, dude, you're the legend chair. of the week. Yeah, yeah. 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 you went above and beyond. Week, you drove to Hollywood. Yeah. When's yeah. the last time you've been in Hollywood? You said a year. Hasn't Whoa, been in Hollywood yeah. in a year. Yeah. It's on the other side of the hill. <laughs> that should give you an understanding of LA. You're you're a fucking soldier, dude. Oh, we'll, yeah. we'll cover the parking. Yeah, we'll cover. yeah, yeah. You guys for got sure. it. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Dudes, that's it. All right, this is fun. New studio broken in. Yeah, the new digs, in. dude. What up? I think we should do another hour. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. No, no, <laughs> uh, still go check out. Uh, leave some reviews. Por favor, they help out the pod. They boost us up in the rankings, which is always good stuff. And uh, thank you guys for coming on. And uh, thank you, Aaron. Jabwow. Jabwow. If you need advice. 